What's up, everybody? If you're listening to the day this episode dropped on April 4th, happy Easter. If you listen to it after, hope you had a good Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, then hey, man, hope you're having a fantastic day. And welcome to the All Right Take 5 podcast. This week's episode had the one and only David Moran, a.k.a. Bunny. For those of you who don't know Dave, then you must be living under a rock. But he's been known for playing bass for the band 5393, Here After The Wave, and the Pantera Tribute Band 333. You also might have seen Bunny running sound for your gigs and favorite shows over at the Rock House and other venues. In other words, Bunny is the fucking man. And I had so much fun recording this episode with one of my favorite people in our little metal music community. We started talking about he's, how he is a listener of the podcast, which I am absolutely flattered to hear. And trust me, I'm so grateful for everyone who actually listens to this podcast. Thank you guys so much. We had talked about the artistic itch and the process of manifesting the unrealistic to reality. That was a really cool conversation we had. And also, Bunny shared many stories with us, such as meeting the legendary Lemmy. And how his old band 5393 got its name, and even the possibility of a reunion. There's so much great stuff on this episode, so enough of me talking. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did recording it. Now, let's hit the music and start this very special Easter Bunny episode. See what I did there? to look at it again that's cool knowing that you heard him yeah oh that's yeah. like it's pretty cool it's definitely interesting crushes mm-hmm. that's pretty fucking dope yeah like i'm 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 stunned thank you well that's what you made him for well yeah but <laughs> you know i don't know man you've ever done stuff? it's like buying a car and be like holy crap it drives <laughs> <laughs> this thing moves what? that's not what i bought it for this thing moves it takes me where i need to go damn <laughs> money well worth spent <laughs> I live here now? I bought it for the radio. You bought the house, of course. (laughs) You mean I could sleep here? (laughs) Yeah. Can I put my clothes over there? (laughs) Do whatever you want. It's your Uh, house. You bought it. (laughs) I'd be like stripping. Just let me get get out of the house first, and then you can do whatever the hell you you want. Are you staying here? What are you doing? (laughs) Are you going to stay here too? That's how it is, man. I don't know. I mean... You don't do that where you, like, record something, you know, like, yeah, fuck it, I'll put it out there. But really, you just did it just for yourself, I guess. I mean, yeah. that's usually what I do. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's just, like, fuck it. Yeah. Just to get it out of your head. Just to get it out of your head, just try something. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because then you can't, like, at least for me, like, my brain never stops. So I'm always just, that's why I never really sleep. Oh, yeah. I'm just. I know exactly you know what where I mean? you're coming from, yeah. Right? You're just laying there in your brain and go, you know, it'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, shut up. Right? That would be fucking cool. <laughs> hey, you might get hurt, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it is, man. And then I'm like, fuck it, okay, I'll just record it, put it out there. In reality, I don't think anyone's going to listen to it, though. Right. Or hear it or give a shit about it. Or, yeah. Or just do it. But I just do it just to do it. Just to say, fuck it, I did it. I tried it. You yeah. have... You have realistic expectations. Oh, yeah, for sure. Right? You're not that guy with that band that's like, my band is better than everyone. I'm going to get signed <laughs> 10 years later. Bro, my band is better than everyone. I'm going to get signed. That's what, what you said about your last band, dude. It's like what the band after like? that. <laughs> and everyone before that one, too. Yeah, that's all you care about. Then you'll never go anywhere. You're just going to be sitting there chasing yeah, if you're doing it for that kind of reason, you're already in it. Yeah, and so wrong. you're 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 doing it for the reason of, you know, artistic itch, right? Artistic itch. Right. <laughs> that sounds like a disease. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is a disease. Artistic itch. <laughs> artistic itch is an expensive <laughs> fucking disease. You think having a baby is expensive? You think 
I'll be good. Right. You think having, you know, <laughs> leprosy? <laughs> no. Our artistic itch is expensive, especially if you're into technology. Right. Yeah. No. Dude, you just uh, I never I've never heard the word artistic itch until now. <laughs> and now I'm like that just <laughs> nails it and describes it so perfectly. Do you or your loved one suffer from artistic itch? Right? <laughs> Please call one eight hundred credit forever and never leave your debt. <laughs> right? Is your you loved one suffering expensive. from artistic itch? Do they continue wasting money on things they don't really need? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Pretty much. <laughs> Do I need another guitar? No. <laughs> Do I want it? Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah, the question is do you you don't need it. Yeah. It's not the question you should be asking yourself though. I've bought shit that I don't need or want just because I'm like hey, dude, I can probably <laughs> I do, use that. I later. do the same thing, dude. Yeah. I'm like I never knew I needed this. Yeah. Right? Or hey, you just you just buy it because it's on sale. Yeah. This used pedal's fifteen dollars. I'm never going to use it. I'm going to buy it, though. <laughs> I've done that. Most of my pedals I have oh, are yeah. because of exactly that same reason. Yeah. Working at Guitar Center, I did that for years. I would see something come oh in. I'm like, God. oh, dude. That's like that's like, a <laughs> that's like a meth head working, selling meth. Right. Like, that's like, a, you know, getting high off my own supply. You're getting high <laughs> off your own supply, dude. Yeah. That's like a diabetic working at a Hershey factory. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> one kiss for fine. me. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> I can't see, from my, I can't see from my right eye anymore. It's fine. Yeah. I don't yeah. need all my toes. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't need to be. I don't need to see anything. <laughs> that doesn't taste good. Well, that's all my. That's all, all my collection, dude. All all the fucking guitars I have are because of that exact same reason. It's just you're browsing in a pawn shop and you go, ooh. How much? Yeah. I mean, I can't say no to that. Right. I can't even remember the last time I bought something brand spanking new. Same. Most of the shit I have, I bought used. Yeah. You know, because mm-hmm. I found it at a good price. And then I think I've only ever bought one guitar new. Ever. And I have like 13 of them. Damn. <laughs> they make that many different guitars? You'd be surprised. <laughs> Some of them are pointy. Oh, some of them are like smooth. Two or three of them. Some have six strings. Some have seven strings. Some are black. <laughs> you know, oh, they have different <laughs> colors. I, that's my biggest pet peeve with guitars. A guitar center. Uh-huh. I don't like black guitars. Right. White guitars. I get that. Blue guitars or red guitars. Yeah, I get that. Right, because I, I see g- them so much. I get that. Yeah. So I totally get that. That's why my bases are all the colors. <laughs> Yeah, because I've been wanting to get a uh, like a C foam green. Yeah, that's got cool. some nice color, a purple one, a pink one. Yeah, we had a badass C foam green Jaguar at Guitar Center, and I would play it every day. It had like a rosewood neck on it too, so that rosewood color Just with the C foam looked amazing. Perfect combination. Yeah, it was badass. I loved it. See, that's what I want to get. I don't know how to play guitar, but I pretend. Doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't. Do, you don't even know how to play guitar to get a guitar. Right. Everyone knows that. I mean, I bought a bass. I don't know how to play bass. Yet I have one. Right, you should playing bass should be easier than playing guitar because there's less to do. <laughs> one would think, yeah, yeah. One, one would, would think. think, right? But that's not the case, man. So that's like that's like saying, uh, and you know, I can cross the crosswalk, <laughs> right? But I can also cross the street at a Formula One race car, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. I, I'm pretty sure I can make it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It'd be dangerous, but hey, why not? That's funny. So it's cool you're here, man. Um, like I said, one of the reasons I did this was just to finally have a good time to talk to the people that I've always looked up to and revered, and you're definitely one of them. I think you look eye to eye to me. <laughs> I think we're about the same height. We're about the same height. Well, I'm 5'3". What are you? Uh, probably like 5'5", five, five, maybe. Five, okay, six. so I'm looking up to you then. No, no, <laughs> no, no. But we're almost up level, but yeah, I, de- I definitely appreciate that because you've sure. been you've been doing it for a long time, a little bit. You're one of the best that I've ever seen doing. Well, I appreciate that because I mean, and and it goes on set. You talk to any musician in this scene in this town, one person that always comes up is yourself. Oh, cool! Fucking Dave Bunny always comes out of people's mouth. You're one of the coolest fucking dudes to work with. I try. Such a humble dude. I try to be nice. <laughs> I try not to take 
and extremely fucking Science talented. and do all that stuff. You know, I just, I literally, yeah, I, I try to live my life by the mantra of one man, the dude. <laughs> like, you know, man, it's just like, you know, the dude. The dude. That's, huh? I try to be like, just cool with everyone, whatever, you know. Just hey, drink a lot of white Russians. A lot of white Russians. <laughs> Mm. Like Russians. Kid. Spend your so- spend your time at the bowling alley. Yeah, yeah. I wish I was good at bowling, dude. That's one of the things that, dude. I grew up in bowling leagues. Really? I'm a badass bowler. Actually. Really? Yeah. No shit. I'm pool leagues. See, I used to be pretty. I was. I used to be pretty decent at pool, but because my dad, uh, we used to have a pool table growing up. I wasn't like a, they they bought one for. My dad said it was a, bir- a Christmas present for me and my sister, but in yeah. reality, it was probably just for him. For him, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, because no one ever done that. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, he bought a pool table, and I spent a lot of time fucking practicing. I would just play pool all the fucking time. Play all the time. And I got pretty fucking decent at it, man. Not gonna lie. And then... I, I moved out, and everything else happened. I didn't touch a fucking pool cue for years. Now I suck so bad. <laughs> but... It's just like math, man. You don't practice your math. You Dude, I mean? yes. Yeah. Like all uh, it is math. I, I was babysitting my nephew on, what was it, Monday. And he's math class. And he's like in first, second grade. And he's showing me things. I'm like, Dude, I don't know what this is anymore. Yeah, it's like uh, um, I thought first, second grade was one plus one equals two. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. No. It's, it's they, yeah, math nowadays is, it's still math, right? One plus one equals two, but... Or they just put so many new things. Yeah, it's like, well, in order to figure that out, because I guess we all, we, everyone thinks that kids are idiots now, <laughs> which, yeah, some are, but there's a lot of kids out there that are a lot smarter than people think. Oh, hell yeah. And, you know, my nieces and everything, when we were helping them with homework, I, I was like, what the hell is this crap? Do Dude. they just think that you're that much of an idiot that they want you to do the longest possible way yeah. so that it's less confusing? But it's more confusing. It's like they do it on purpose. So I don't right? Know, it's weird. But are you still pretty good at bowling? I guess yes. you go if you go. Oh bowl. yes. Yeah. Do mm-hmm. you bowl often? I try to go as much as I can with the wife or friends or my Just cousins. Me, me and my cousin were the ones that were grew up in bowling league. My were you, were you doing bowling league? Because like everyone around me was doing bowling. Or was just something like, hey, fuck it, let's try to bowl. My uncle is a pro bowler. Oh, shit. Yeah, he goes to Vegas and bowls. He doesn't do it anymore. He's retired, right? He's also a pro pool player. He would go to Vegas wow. and play pool, right? So that's where I got my chops. I was always with my cousin and my uncle, and we were always bowling, always playing pool in the same time. Damn, we would go dude. do the leagues in the morning on Saturday and Sunday and then stay afterwards and go play pool at Freeway Lanes. That's and awesome. Just for years we did that, right? I got a couple of... uh. Perfect games where I got, you know, the shirt and the trophy and things like that. It was, it was really a lot of fun. It Did you ever try to maybe go, like, hey, I'm going to try to do a pro, too? Yeah, never really thought about it. You know, by the time I was 15, 16, it was already fading out, and we weren't really going as much anymore. Mm. But we were going for fun, you know what I mean, and th- things like that. But it's it's just, I don't know, bowling and pull. And, you know, it's funny I don't look like a pool player. I don't even <laughs> play anywhere. I just naturally really good at it. My mom is a pool shark. My uncle is a pool shark, and I learned from both of them. Holy shit! And these guys uh, in the Pantera tribute found out the hard way. <laughs> we were in Austin, <laughs> and we were upstairs at the green room, <laughs> and they had this really sick pool table with the Jack Daniels logo on it. Uh-huh. It, was, it was amazing. I think I have a picture. I'll send it to you. Uh, And these guys are a little bored, and they're all like, oh, let's play some pool. I was like, cool, you guys want to play with money? and What's up? You know what I mean? (laughs) They were like, nah, let's just play. I was like, all right. So they started playing, and then uh, our driver at the time, Elvis, was like, hey, bro, let's come on, let's play you and me. I was like, all right. So I think I beat him like in four or five minutes, just a pop, 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 done. And then he was like, all right. So then everybody else started playing, and they were like, all right, man, you can go downstairs, dude. Like, (laughs) It's like, not fun anymore. It's not fun playing like, with Bunny at all, man. Me. Yeah, it's fun for me. It's like, can I go, please? Yeah. <laughs> Is it my turn yet? Yeah, right? <laughs> you don't get a turn. <laughs> Shut up. Bah. Yeah. Bah. I'm a little bored. I'll give you a turn. <laughs> Let's see what but, you can do. I mean, I play offensively and defensively very well. 
I'll put those balls right in front of your <laughs> shit and right balls in your face. Fucking bunny knows how to play with balls, man. I, I, uh, you know, it's fun. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. I didn't know about that. Shiny balls. <laughs> so whenever, whenever fucking anyone wants to start a league, you know who to go to. Yeah, this man Come right here. Come hit me up. We should do that. That would be fun. We should like do a, like a, a whole bowling league for metal dudes. Just do a metal band assholes. bowling league. Yeah. Imagine? That'd yeah. be fucking dope. We have to do that now. Yeah, that would be a good idea. And then, you know, I think uh, Polo Paso does like the night thing. Yeah. It's all black light. And yeah, me and my girl went to Polo Paso the other night, and that was probably the best bowling game I've ever had in my life. I'm like, damn, I'm actually doing pretty good now. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's awesome. It's so much fucking fun. But now we have to do that. Like, that has to happen. We have to have a fucking metal band bowling league. Let's do it. Every band just goes in and then... We'll probably all lose to you, but it'll still be fucking fun. Nah, I'll just pretend like I'm not doing anything. I'll just throw the ball. Hell right, no, cool. dude. You got to just kill it because I want to see it. I want to see you just destroy the alleys, the yeah. lanes. Yeah. I have, uh, I used to have four or five bowling balls. I had, still have one. I was about to ask you. You have yeah. your own, like, yeah. balls, shoes, all the whole thing? Yeah, I don't have any more shoes. No. I, I stopped buying them when I grew out of it, but uh, I do have my own pull stick. It's a homer pull stick. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and then... I'll have a story about Scott Ronson in pool. Okay, go. I beat his ass. <laughs> I beat his ass at clicks on the on the west side. Kelly Q was having like some pool tournament, uh-huh. and I was just old enough to enter, so I entered, and I schooled everybody. And Scott Ronson, hey man, all right, let's get this game going. Everything like that. Oh, you know, I was like, all right, dude, let's do this, and he broke, did like two or three shots, and then I got on the table and just destroyed him. That's all and he, he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I ran and I won this like super expensive pool stick, which I ended up giving to my mom. Nice. Yeah. Because your mom's fucking yeah, great. That, that's my Scott Ronson story. <laughs> if you were to play pool with you and your mom, who would win? Oh. At now, my mom probably because she plays every weekend. Do you guys ever do that? Yeah. Did oh, you, did yeah did I've you, gone out with my mom and played with her. Do you guys do the whole Rocky Apollo thing? <laughs> Behind closed doors, see who would win. No one ever knew. No one ever knew. <laughs> <laughs> it was just between you two, right? <laughs> nah, she 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 definitely would take me down. Yeah, yeah. After a while, though, when I start to warm up, it would probably be a you know a little bit a closer, little bit closer. But she's too good, just because she plays every weekend. You know, mm. if I played every weekend, there'd be difference. That'd be my career. Well, you're lucky I ain't got the time, mom. Yeah, you're lucky I ain't got the time, mom. Yeah. Do the shoes make a difference when you ball? I always wonder. Oh that. yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like you're talking about regular shoes or or like the bowling shoes the or bo- like yeah. custom bowling yeah. shoes. Yeah, custom bowling shoes make a huge difference because a they fit better and they're more comfortable, right? And they got a slightly different material on the bottom of the shoes that definitely help you slide less, but but still enough to where you can do what you need to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Definitely. If you're gonna be playing a lot, get some shoes. Right, because I I never knew, like I don't even know what the footwork's supposed to be. Right, I've yeah, done. everybody's footwork is different. I've always just looked at everyone I'm like, okay, that guy looks like he's good. I'm gonna copy what he's doing, and I'm like, okay, that kind of worked. Yeah, I mean, you and I couldn't copy some dude that's six foot five. Oh, of course not. Right, <laughs> you know, what I mean, those dudes. <laughs> my are, legs, are, my legs are too tiny. Yeah, me too. I got little tiny legs. <laughs> They're struggling to reach the floor right now. <laughs> They're like pointing at. <laughs> I can get him. I can get the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all torso. <laughs> right? That's why my shirts never fit. Same, dude. Right? Right? I'm the it's same not, it's not the gut. It's not the gut. <laughs> even, if I, even when I think thin, I don't, yeah. I don't fit. I feel right. thin. I mean, it's good <laughs> enough, right? Thin, right? That's the only thing that matters. So I'm so pretty. Oh, so pretty. Something in words and... Is it pretty, maybe? I don't maybe. Know. I'm the most worst lyricist. If I was a vocalist, I'd be like the best worst vocalist. The best worst vocalist? Because I don't remember lyrics for shit. So you just fucking freestyle it the whole way? I life? freestyle. I will put words together better than Eminem sometimes. And right? you got bars? Like, you got bars on? I got bars. <laughs> I got... Well, not really. But uh, the whenever we would record, like with Hector and my old band and everything... Dude, like the singers would be like, bro, can you step outside? Because I would be making fun of the lyrics. 
Or I'd be like putting other words in place of their lyrics so that well, I could remember them. Because you're over here trying to just. Okay. And then other people would start singing along to my lyrics, right? Uh, and they'd be like, uh, can you not do that? Can you not? <laughs> I'm like, sorry, dude. It's just habit. Shout out Hector. I love that dude too, man. Hector, he's 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 all right. <laughs> he's okay. He's okay. He's an all right guy. Well, he's you a, t- you two he, are, are he's too. He's pretty cute. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. He's he's very easy on the eyes. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't kick him out of bed for eating crackers if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that dude. I've known that guy for 20 years plus ish, maybe. Yeah, around there. Uh, I remember I said, again, speaking to musicians, whether they're old, whether they're new, whether they've been there for years, or whether they just started. Yeah. Talk about Hector Camarena, the third, by the way. <laughs> the third. The third. Everyone talks about you. Everyone talks about Hector. We Everyone knows who you guys are. You guys were part of one of my absolute fucking favorite bands of all fucking time. Don't say 5393. 5393. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 5393 was one of my favorites. Dude, 5393. I, 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 when I had Hector on, and I, he was sitting right, right where you right, are. Yeah. And I was just fangirling in front of him the whole fucking time. Yeah. I was just like, I'm fangirling in front of you. No shit. One of my fucking favorite bands of all time. Not wow. only local, not only fucking from here, just because you, you guys are fucking awesome. Yeah, that band was ridiculously fun, right? It had its moments, just like anything else, where it was stressful. Of course, right? uh, you know. Okay, so I'll I'll tell you this. You know, you're telling me that y- you you like my playing, and it's you feel like it's some of the best, and it's not it really. No, right? I'm I'm not really. And I attribute everything that I've learned and played and done to Hector. When I first met him, I was playing in a band called Sanskrit. Way, way back. How old are you? I'm 29. Okay, so you would have been... Jesus Christ. Around eight or nine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. I <laughs> don't feel old whatsoever. So I'm not going to tell you, you how asked, old I You asked, dude. <laughs> you asked. Jeez. You asked. I thought you were a little older than that. I mean, I'm I'm, old, I'm as old as you want me to be, baby. I <laughs> Like 95 or something. I got you. Yeah. I want to kick your titties from the floor <laughs> up to my mouth. I want to like break your head. <laughs> like just, just bop them left and right. And <laughs> right into my mouth. <laughs> Right? <laughs> that was very descriptive. Yeah. We've I mean, done this before. Yeah. I mean, I've never stopped doing it. <laughs> I mean, you think I'm bad. Oh, my God. Dude, you need to sit around with either Hereafter Guys, Hereafter the Wave, or Pantera Tribute. More specifically, sitting in a bus or a van with Pantera Tribute is either the best time of your life or the worst time of your life. I, Nothing I, in between. I couldn't imagine how, how well they can get. Yeah, it gets pretty... I have videos that if I put out, all of us would go to jail, I'm sure. <laughs> or just... Or we would just be like a, a victim to cancel culture. Mm. <laughs> right? Okay. They'd be like, cancel that band right cancel now. Cancel that band. They don't like gay people and they don't like whatever. All Man, we do is com- uh, people commend need them. It. People need We it. love their lifestyle. Are you kidding me? Right. <laughs> People just right. need to be cool, man. Just be cool. Just be cool. Just be cool, man. Right? We never say negative things. <laughs> we say positive things. Just people turn them into, into negative, negative things. things. You heard it negatively. Yeah. But we actually yeah. meant it positively. Yeah. It's it's all in the, the listeners' ears, man. Yep. Nobody can make up their mind anymore. Either. Everybody's <sighs> right or wrong to themselves. And I, d- I don't understand <laughs> how people can have so much energy in their life to constantly be finding what's wrong yeah you know what i mean do you know how much fucking time and energy that takes to waste to be like oh well they said this and they did that and this person does this i'm like dude just yeah those are the kind of people that just be cool feel like it's easier to point and blame than it is to take responsibility and live your life yeah right oh if i point and blame this person for my life being wrong then i justify my life being trash Right. Yeah, but just but at not, the same time, works. that same exact person that's saying, "Oh, the reason why my life is like this is because politics, politics, politics." This person, this person, that person, this person, and everything. You know what? You live in the same city as me. We were born around the same time. We grew up the same way. We did everything the same way. I don't think my life is trash. 
Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, oh, yeah. I, I tell that to people all the time because I have some friends that are just like, dude, just pick yourself up. Please. Yeah, something. Just you know get I mean? the fuck up. Like, we all have our stories. What makes you so fucking special to quit? Right. You know? Yeah. We all have our stories. We all have our sob stories. We've all been through shit. Mm-hmm. And I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, look, we all go through shit. You decide the kind of piece of shit you want to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're going to be the same uh, piece of shit, or are you going to be a different piece of shit? Yeah. It's pretty shitty. It's pretty <laughs> shitty, but you decide what kind of shit you want to be. Right. You know, you want to be a polished turd, or you just want to be just another turd. A shitty turd. A shitty turd. <laughs> right. You know, do you want to have corn? No corn. Right. <laughs> can I put green beans in mine? Can, I, can mine be green? <laughs> <laughs> so going back to 5393. Five three nine three. Which again, I think if if you guys were to start up start that band now, I think you'd be probably bigger than it was. I think you guys were way ahead of your time. Oh yeah. I way definitely way ahead of I, your fucking time. Because you guys did things you guys did things that I would not hear again years afterwards and I'll be like I've heard that. Yeah. Five three did that. Right. What the fuck? Right. Right. So the thing about five three is we focused a lot on rhythm and style. No, right? you could you could tell. Right. And even the name, did Hector tell you what five three nine three came from? No, I was gonna ask him that, but then I got so cut up and everything else that I never Right. We all stood there one day, put our pants down and we measured each other and we were five. <laughs> Well, three, unfortunately. Nine, <laughs> right? I'll let you guess who that was. And then another three. That was it was half the well, band is at least at least whoever, <laughs> no, at least whoever no. had the I will say whoever, at least whoever had the three they didn't feel so bad because there was another the three, three. Right? <laughs> hey, you're not you're abnormal, bro. Five three nine two <laughs> would be like who's, who's two? Has He's nothing two. to do with the order we stand in on stage. Maybe. <laughs> right? Nah. Five three nine three came out of desperately wanting a name we were starting right we were practicing we had our first show and then we were like dude we don't even have a name yet you guys played a show without a name no no no. we were we got asked to play by oh a friend okay, okay. And we're like all right and he's like well, what's the name of the band we're like i don't know is that so, meh with the m-e-h or yeah. meh m-u-h yeah <laughs> it's it's meh. <laughs> but you gotta get the growl in there <sighs> I don't know how you're going to write that down, but you can do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we had a, a, a board. We would write down the rhythms on the board because we would have a hard time remembering things that we wrote, right? So, because nobody really wrote like that, it was always, you know, straightforward. Yeah. Right? Instead of... Yeah. Right? Which, that was 5393 right there. Literally... The rhythm to one of our songs was five three nine three. Think of that. Right? Mind blown. And it was written on the board. And we were just like, oh no. And then Hector looks up, he's like, Bro, how about five three nine three? And I was like, That's fucking cool. That's fucking genius, dude. And we were like, let's do it. Fuck it. We need to submit a name, whatever. Let's do it. N- nothing like a name about the band and what it's about That's in the actual name. Makes me love the band even more now. Right? I mean, if that's the reality of it, we should have called this band I like it when balls are in my face. <laughs> right? But no, no. But that's not as catchy. It's not as catchy. It's not as catchy. It's, it's a lot harder to put that on a shirt. That is such a cool <laughs> fucking thing, man. Like, I didn't even know. I, was, I, I wanted to ask, but then we said, I just... I'm, I have ADHD, just goes out the window. That's so fucking cool. Yeah. So and that's really all it was, is just a rhythm in one of our songs. Because, i telling you, way ahead of oh. time. And the bouncing is, oh. just, no, why would you do that? Hmm. Tell you, way ahead of your time. Oh, yeah. This is stuff... Hector, you know, that dude's got a brain that will melt yours if, if you sit there and listen to him talk about how he likes to write or just watch him write. 
you know, just just hearing his whole backstory because that's usually what we did the, the episode I had him on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we just listened to his whole backstory and it was just like that's what I told him he's the chosen one. It, it's just like you oh, yeah. can't make that shit up. Yeah, you can't. You know, yeah. and just he- hearing him talk about it, you're like this guy's being one hundred percent real. Yeah, he's not fabricating anything. He's like it's insane. Yeah, yeah, and you know. Him and I are very similar when it comes to how real we can be, right? He can be a lot more straightforward to the point, you know, s- sandpaper, you know what I mean? Right. Like, whatever. And I love him for that, you know what I mean? And that's what he liked about me, too, is that I can be very straightforward, too, but I'm also very reserved, right? right? Like I said, I like to just be cool. Just cool. be cool. Right? And I remember Hector telling me I would hang around with him at, at his studio and how we really became friends is I would tell him, hey, man, this is really good. I don't like your symbols, though. <laughs> I think they're too sh- shiny and bright and everything. I like darker sounding symbols, but that's just my personal preference. I mean, the mix is great. And he's like, oh, cool. Well, thanks. Like, yeah, I'll consider that. And he would tell me, he's like, bro, everybody just says, oh, that's cool. And then they complain about their part. You know what I mean? Or whatever. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's like, it's cool that you're telling me giving me feedback on my mix like yeah. real feedback real feedback yeah and that's really generally how we started hanging out he recorded my band sanskrit we had a great time partied a little too much probably <laughs> but from then on forward it was just like history in the making of our lives two titans my, meeting he's together. my hetero life partner <laughs> no i'm telling you the the chemistry like I said, me just just as a fan, because I would see you guys when I was a kid. I was like 15, uh, 15, 16, just going to shows. You guys are one of my absolute favorite to watch. And I didn't know I didn't know you guys at that time. I was just there to watch a certain band, but you guys opened, or I'm there to see a local show, and I just see you guys play. God, you must have been 15, 16? Yeah. Yeah. I was like 15, 16 years old. And I, it left a mark. It really did, because before then, uh, I I barely started playing guitar when I was like fifteen, but it really wasn't anything, right? Big, yeah. yeah entry know, level, just starting, just yeah. Entry level, curious. Why not? Curious, just try it. You know. Never had the in my back of your head. You're like, um, oh, it'd be cool to start a band, but never really was a thing that like right. I can do that. Right, right. Until I saw you guys. Oh. And I saw. I don't know, man. It was just like an energy to you guys. Yeah, and I, I didn't. I didn't know you guys. I'd never met you guys before. But the first thing that I just knew was there was chemistry, was between Hector and you. Yeah. And I'm watching that, and my life was instantly changed. Wow, that's great. That's a because awesome inspirational story that inspired me to be better than me. Because initially, because um. I was speaking to Norman. I'm like, initially I wanted to be a bassist. Norman. Uh, Nahar from uh, All That Bleeds used to be All That oh, Bleeds. Oh, Norm. Norm. Hi, Norm. Hi, Norm. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy, dude. He's Amazing. fucking awesome. I, I recently had him. Uh, oh, so we were talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, I wanted to be a bassist, usually because like one of the first bands I heard was Black Sabbath, yeah. and the first thing that really stuck to me was the bass. Oh, yeah. You know, geezer on the bass. Geezer like, Butler. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. So I was I was into the bass, and then I, I didn't want to pick up a guitar until I heard ACDC, and I saw the cover. I'm like, never mind. I'm going to go to guitar. But seeing you play, I'm like, I kind of want to play bass again. Oh. <laughs> and then, but then I saw Hector play, too. I'm like, no, I want to do that, too. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Which choices. one do I want to do? Right? Here, here comes your, what kind of piece of shit do I want to be? What kind of piece of shit do I want to be? <laughs> hmm. But I remember I saw you guys a couple times. The first time I saw you guys, you had a vocalist. I don't know who it was. I wish I could say who it was, but... Tall, skinny? Yes. Uh, if he was tall, it was Ralph. Rafa. I my think cousin. he was tall. Yeah. And he did a great job. Kind of had big, broad shoulders. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my cousin. So I saw you guys. First time I saw you was with him, and then afterwards I saw... I can tell you a funny story about that real quick. For it. <laughs> we didn't know we were cousins. What? Right? right? How do you not... <laughs> Wait... What? We're like distant cousins, right? Okay, Our okay. families are related, okay. but that technically we're now. cousins, right? By the way, they were married in. 
we didn't realize that until I went over to his house one day and his parents Mom? were like, hey, is that David's, that your, your grandfather's, your genes? I'm like, yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, no, we're all related. I was like, what? what? It's like, bro, we're cousins. Mm. And then we were like inseparable from that point. But you guys were already pretty good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's how funny, right? Funny how that works. Hey, you want to join my band? Yeah. Okay. You're my cousin. <laughs> right. It's like you got to have a, a marriage license. You guys are related. You can't be in a band together. (laughs) Damn it. Right? That's cool, man. So it was it was definitely interesting and I I still talk to him and his parents every once in a while and we still you know, no one no one in this band really in five three nine three or anything like that has really ended or left or on seriously bad notes. No, I mean I never heard any beef from from that band ever. Yeah. Um we we tried to be real cool with everyone. Everyone from that band was revered. Everyone from that band was fucking cool. Um, the only two people I have had the honor of getting to know is you and Hector, and that's like a shit, huge honor. It was like they say, don't meet your heroes because they're dicks. That's not the case with you guys. You yeah. guys are some of the coolest, most giving dudes anyone's ever met. Yeah, and then, you know, we had another guitar player. At the very beginning. Really? Yeah, Alex. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, he, I don't know if you remember the band Off Pill. No. To wait, this is also you would have been again like nine years old, um, but Alex was a magician. Really, the dude that dude really introduced us to like Genty style stuff. Okay, right. He was really into like Stained, right? I know everybody knows Stained. Well, well, it's terrible, freaking vocals that I can't stand. <laughs> Just sounds like it's. Bitching and whining the whole time, well, he but is bitching and whining the whole time. The goddamn music, like that guitar player, he's killer, right? Yes, like, it's like he's doing stuff in the back while the drums are just playing a simple two four beat, yeah. and this guy's like, yeah. like yeah, because like um, like one of the podcasts I listen, I listen to that made me go like I want to do podcasts is uh, the Justice Show. Uh, yeah. And he had the guitarist from Stain. Yeah. And I'm like an avid listener, so I listen to every episode. I'm like, why the fuck am I going to listen to the guitarist from Stain? Yeah. Because in my back of my mind, I'm like, dude, Stain is just, yeah, you know. I mean, the dude loved the guy so much, he had his custom guitar, Schechter. Or yeah. Schechter or Ibanez? I think it was an Ibanez. So he had a conversation with the dude. I'm like, this guy's fucking awesome. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's give it a listen. And I'm yeah. hearing him like, holy shit, this guy fucking rips. Yeah. He does. He shouldn't be in this band. Yeah, he he definitely seems like he was in the wrong band. But for sure, I can't hate for him. He found a way to still be doing his thing, right? But making it popular enough to where they made it to an astronomical level, right? You know, like Stain is almost a household name of a band. Oh yeah, for sure. You know, it's hard, and it's unfortunately, it's because of that one acoustic song that everybody right. knows. How we feel inside there. I don't know. It's, it's God, I hate that song. It's, it's like it's hard for me to anyone. And it's not even the band. It's him and his acoustic guitar. Yeah, it's when he goes. Oh, fucking, but it's stained. I'm like, no, it's not. It's not. It's the <laughs> fucking dude, right? But you know what the only thing I hate about stain is they made it impossible for me to go. Hey man, how you doing? It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while Jeez. since I heard that song. Oh God Does damn it! There you go. <laughs> Uh, I can never hear someone say it's been a while without this fucking song playing in my head. And automatically it's just, it's been a while. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna make me cry. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. I, I can't hear someone say that sentence without that song. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Stan. And see, I, I do that to people too. I ruin people's songs, <laughs> right? Okay, Devo. You know Devo, right? I love Devo. Okay. Years ago, we were eating, and this is where it comes into where I'm telling you I'm the best, worst vocalist, <laughs> right? We were eating, I don't remember, Logan's, I think, or I don't remember where it was. Uh, and a song came on overhead, Tempted by the Fruit of Another. Uh, and yeah. all my life, all my life, I've always said, Tempted by the fruit and banana. <laughs> and David, like, fucking lost his goddamn shit. <laughs> We're in the middle of the restaurant. The, the dude is, like, trying to breathe. He's laughing so fucking hard. This was years ago. And he still, to this day, is like, bro, tempted by the fruit and banana. He'll just randomly send me text 
tempted by the food. And so I'm like, all right. And to me, it's like a normal thing, but I guess to everyone else, it's like, what the? What the? <laughs> so. Oh man. Yeah. Now, I need to have Dave on. I've been asking him, but we just never got the schedules right. First thing I'm doing is playing that fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna laugh. I'm telling you, he's gonna be like, bro, how did you know? How did you know? <laughs> but yeah, I I'm I don't remember lyrics for shit at all. I can barely remember song names. I'm in a Pantera tribute band and I could barely remember song names, but I n- remember the songs. You remember the songs. Hey, all right. So like, once you hear, start hearing the first notes, you're like, okay, okay, this is the song we're playing. I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible, with, but I will see someone's face and be like, I know that guy from like 15 years ago. I do. Somehow. Right? Yeah. Some. And then like, oh yeah, I'm this person. I'm like, oh yeah. Okay, okay there we go. There you go. There, there it is. is. I wish I even had that. I suck. My memory's so bad. I don't remember anything. So you remember we met this then? I'm like, I'm right? sorry, dude. I don't. I tend to remember things really good. Like, I don't remember names really well, but I remember faces really well. Like, I see a guy, I'm like, I know that guy from 15 years ago. I'm just kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just doing my memory. <laughs> it's like, is he repeating? Is he no. Wait a minute. He's doing something <laughs> here. It's a terrible Wait interview. Time. Jeez. But, tell me, man. Way ahead of your fucking time. Oh, you go. Way ahead of your fucking time. Uh, this guys, was this was the booty song. <laughs> this was a song that would get you like twerking. Hell yeah, I did. I could hear this yeah. playing at the club. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Sick that is. Yeah, I'm known for twerking on stage, especially to the song. I would shake my ass. Like I said, way oh, ahead of its fucking time. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I can't whistle that high. Uh, no, I can't, can't even try it. But that 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 intro right there, that groove, that jumping groove. Oh yeah, that's what every that's what's in right now. Yeah, that's what everyone's trying to do now. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, like, we invented polyphia. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Dude, I wish fucking periphery did got big because of that shit. Yeah, yeah, but. You guys did it way before. Periphery? You mean son of five three three? <laughs> you mean no? Yeah, uh, right. That's, children? Now that is a claim, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a claim. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't me. Hector, <laughs> Hector said that. <laughs> but way ahead of its fucking time, because the only band that was doing that, and again, they're the grandfathers of the whole thing too, is like Mashuga. Mashuga. Yeah. Because Mashuga's way ahead of their fucking time too. Like. Light years ahead oh. of every what everyone was doing. Yeah, dude, for sure. Because this is the time where seven strings, eight strings, extended range wasn't really a thing. No, you know it was yeah, just it like just just a you know tuning. People would look lower, at you like what the thicker strings fuck was, are you was doing? Was yeah, to, yeah, just twelve gauge strings. I'll never forget reading an article about Meigs from Cold Chamber. Mm-hmm. That dude had like a custom guitar that could handle like crazy tension, and he would tune down to like negative whatever octaves just crazy and like he had like piano strings almost on that shit yeah and it was a little six string and if you listen to chamber music that's where you really hear like all that low just that chamber music really i think is where it started going lower for everybody Mm. so i never really heard anything that low until that until that cold chamber album chamber music yeah and i freaked out i was like Fuck, dude, that shit's low. And that's my thing, right? I mean, not just because I'm a bass player, but, dude, lower tunings to me is what gets me, like, in the mood to beat the crap out of somebody. You know what I mean? That's your that's your thing. That's yeah. your thing. Yeah. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I love thrash and standard tunings and higher and everything like that because when it came to that kind of music, it was the vocals and the drums that got everybody and the leads. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, because I, I remember the first time I heard Cold Chamber. There it is. Yeah, you can hear how low that is. Yeah. And yeah. even Dez. Uh, I met Dez a few times and interviewed him really? when I was helping another friend do a show kind of like this. It was called The Amp Show way back in 98, 99 mm-hmm. when Sounds of the Underground came in. Okay. Right? Uh, we interviewed everybody, including Devin, War. The original core lineup, oh, right? Nice. Oh, dude, we partied with everybody. Hell and yeah. Dez was cool as fuck. 
right? And he was telling me, he was like, yeah, dude, like we've gotten lower and this and that. I actually, he actually changed his vocal style. He had to like sing a little higher to match, to match, frequency. right? Because he was like, dude, it's getting so low. I couldn't go that low. So I had to go higher. Mm-hmm. And if you listen to this album and his previous albums, you hear it right away. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, because it, it's, it's either you go lower, yeah. which it's just, might as well just stick a microphone up your ass and yeah, yeah. have your bowel movements going. Yeah. Or you go higher. Mm-hmm. But it matched really well. Yeah. Because I think that's when it really, that's when culture were really just hit oh. their stride. That's when that's that's when they were at the top you and know? Then they just disappeared. Right? They just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. I, guess I, know, I know the bass player writes gaming music. Oh, nice. Yeah. She's mm-hmm. pretty hot too. I think uh, yeah, she was pretty hot. Oh, she is pretty hot. That wasn't me that said that. Ooh. My wife is listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, she don't care. <laughs> I think that's when he started Devil Driver. You, you know what my wife would say? Oh, yeah, Devil Driver. My wife would be like, yeah, she's hot. Good luck trying to get that. <laughs> that that's my wife. Right? <laughs> Go, good luck. She, she, she's not the jealous type because she knows that my fat, ugly ass wouldn't score that if I gave her a million dollars. You could tell her how good you are with balls, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm really good with big balls down a big slippery hallway, hallway thing. thing. Hitting other... I don't know. Pins? Pins? I think this got weird. Yeah. Or not. I mean... I mean, whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> just whatever you want it to be. Yeah, I mean... If it was whatever I wanted to be, oh my God, dude, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys were doing it, man. You guys were, again, ahead of your time. Because the only other band that I could think of doing it was, like, Meshuggah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. This was in 94. That's massive. Yeah. Like, who? God. You could play that right now, and I, and it's, I could. It's, it's still. It's fucking still valid. Heavy. Yeah. Still valid. If yeah. I were to, if I were to get a kid who just got into metal and they're like, I just like fucking, because I was that kid where I was like, it's brutal or nothing. It's better be fucking heavy as balls or get it out of my face. Yeah. And it's got to be new, right? Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. nowadays. Now these kids are like, it has to be new. I don't yeah. listen to old shit. If they had no idea who Mashuga was, or they only knew fucking Obzen forward, right? Which most people do. Yeah, Obzen. They can thank Bleed for that. Yeah. Now we're to play this song. The first album first in '94, the last track of that fucking album. Oh, dude, yeah. It would stand its ground. It it still stands its ground. Yeah. To Anything. Listen to anything else in 94. Anything else. Yeah. Nothing the same. That's what I was trying to look for because I had a friend of mine, shout out to Ruben. He sent me a video of Meshuga playing live like in their hometown somewhere yeah. back in 94. Back in 94. Damn, I got to see that. I'll see if I, if I find it again. I'll send it to okay. you. Okay. It's killer because it's it's a big crowd and everyone just looks like, 90, like everyone from the 90s, you know? Yeah. And... You mean Jinkos? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So fucking these guys are coming on stage and fucking massive dudes. Their guitars are fucking huge. And back when they were using Line Six, yes, Line Line fucking, fucking Six. six. It could sound that fucking the heavy. Only people in the world that actually made it do line right. Six yes. sound good. Yes, the only people. The only people in the world. And just just because they're Mashuga. Yeah. Any other one? No one can make. That's how powerful six. their hands are. Imagine getting fingered by one of those guys. <sighs> You'd my butt turn into hurt. dust. <laughs> <laughs> my butt were fucking destroyed the place. And uh, it's funny because they 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 didn't even do like a okay we're Meshuga this yeah. first song so no just right get off the up there and bat. be like all right we're just gonna shove it in there dirt and all yeah that's <laughs> so exactly what they did yeah everyone's facing down to turn around Sven turns around and then they start boom and it's fucking crushing. And the crowd, everyone's doing the whole fucking looking around like, what the hell is going on? Are we seeing this? Are we hearing this? Is everyone doing this? Is yeah, this yeah. real? And they don't care. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. I'll call them later. Everyone's just like, what the hell is going on? And yeah. they can't comprehend it. Like, it's way too... It's, it's like uh, in Back to the Future, fucking Martin oh, yeah. flies <laughs> playing... Your kids are gonna, gonna love this. Your kids day. are gonna love this. Yeah. Your, your grandkids are gonna love this. That's exactly what they were. Yeah. That's I, exactly what happened. I agree. You know? I agree. Fucking years, decades later, Meshuga's finally on top of the mountains as they should have been when they first fucking started. Oh yeah. 
you know? But no one else was doing it. Yeah. And I never stopped them from, like, hey, fucking, we're the only people doing this. Should we stop? Yeah. And then, you know, anyone that ever even tried to do it couldn't get couldn't it. Couldn't get it. They couldn't get it the same way. Like, what are the chances in the universe that these dudes all met and they create this music, right? You know, which butterfly flapped his wings? Wings, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, God, it's just to think about that, you know, any little thing could have changed anyone's course in life and we would have not had Meshuggah. We would have not had our style of music. We and probably wouldn't even be sitting here exactly. doing this. You know, And any of those guitars could have been uh, joining a tribute band, right? Or a cover band instead. Yeah. Or stained. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> 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 and it would have changed everything. We wouldn't have modern metal as we have it today. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, it would have it would have changed a lot. You know, who knows whether we end up in the same place? Who knows why anything happens? Right? It just happens. It just happens. Right? It's that's that's how I feel about everything. You know what I mean? It just happens. You can make things happen, right? True. But if it's unnatural, if it's not meant to be, it's not gonna work. Right, if it feels natural, it feels like it's meant to be, and you're making it happen. That's the biggest reward you could have. Right, right, because it just comes naturally. Yes, it's, it's not weird. It's uh, organic. Yeah, there you go. that's the word I was trying to look for. It's very organic. It feels right, uh, and as long as it just feels organic to you. Yeah, because it could be, Mashuga. Yeah, where these guys knew what they were doing. You know, the fucking Millennium Sign of Christ. Ooh. 98. And it's always... <laughs> <laughs> right, just, just trying to mouth that is so... Just, just, trying, to th- just trying to think about it. It hurts my yeah. brain. Yeah, just... Like... I wish I could pick their brains and be like, how? I don't know. Like even in five three, I wish I could you, absorb their brain. Jeez. How, how did you guys like? I'm I'm uh, five three nine three. How it do was, you guys it was even a big collective for sure? Bobby, Mister Mister Mashuga was all about Mashuga, and that had, that had a huge influence on us, right? And then Hector with his magically delicious writing style, right? And then I would just interject here and there and be like. Hey, from my point of view, I think it'd be cool to do this, cut this, put this over here. We could try it if you want. And they would try it. And that was the cool thing about, you know, Hector. Hector wasn't like, no, I wrote this song. This is how it's going to be. Well, I think that's one of the most important parts of being able to work with people. Yeah. Is being able to work with people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like if you're going to have, you can't go into the idea of like, I'm going to start a band. It's my band. And everyone's doing stuff that I want them to do because yeah. it's my band. Yeah, mm, that's the best way to fail. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It's it's you have to get people that you know can add things to it, change things, but the vision's still there. Yeah, you know, the end product is now what you wanted, or most of the time, even better than what you imagine. Yeah, it's a manifestation of unrealistic reality, right? Right. It's it's. And the only reason why I say unrealistic reality is because who's really sitting there like, I'm going to realistically write everything and it's going to be amazing to everyone that hears it. Right. right? It's not. It's never no, it's it's unrealistic. Realistic, yeah. Right. So the manifestation of unrealistic reality is everyone putting in a part that they like, an understanding that they like, and everybody putting in an understanding to that, right? Right. You put all those realities together, it's a manifestation of unrealistic reality. Or something put. like that. That's <laughs> magnificently put. Like it's it's exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Because music really is unrealistic. It really is. Right. People take for granted what music is because oh, it makes you move and it's a beat and it's cool and makes me emotional, makes me this, makes me that. Right. Music, ten miles from here is completely different. Right. Right. Ten miles music. from here, yeah. different kinds of beat make people move. Mm-hmm. Different kinds of lyrics make people feel sad or emotion. Yep. The same thing that makes you shake your ass doesn't right. make some other person shake their ass. Yeah. 
That's why I try not to judge too much on different music, right? True. I, I like a lot of music. There is a lot of music that's trash, but it's still music. Right. It's it means still it's something, something to, to someone. someone. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Pinch, poke, okay. you owe me a Coke or Jinx. Uh, poke, <laughs> poke my butt back. I don't know how it goes. I don't know how it goes. But exactly, because I, I, I've come to that conclusion too, where I said, Music is like beauty, I guess. It's in the eye of the beholder and the eye, eye of the listener, man. right? It's right now we were we were geeking out and loving over Meshuga. Yeah, I could play that same song, which I think is fucking brilliant, and someone else is gonna hear this and go, "The fuck is that?" Yeah, can like, you please shut that off? Oh. That's trash. Yeah, where's the uh? Where's the singer? Why is he sound screaming so much? I can't understand what he's saying. Yeah, well, well I can't understand mumble rappers either. It's so. not. It's not even like <laughs> it's not even the scream. It's even the the guitar patterns itself. The rhythm yeah. patterns are so far out there that some people can't even. Me and you will listen to him like, holy shit, that's brilliant. Yeah, and other people go, this makes no sense at all. Yeah, and I could understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, I finally been able to like. Take myself out of myself, I guess, if that makes any sense. It does. Listening to the music I love in a different set of ears and go, why the fuck do I like this in the first place? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, and that just be, I can't judge anyone else because I think that sounds like trash because equally my music sounds like trash to them. All right. You know? Right. Everybody's, everybody's got an opinion. Just, you know, that's that's been said a billion times, but. Look, man, opinions are like assholes. I don't want to see your asshole sometimes. Yeah. You know? Pretty stinky. <laughs> stinky. Uh, stinky. Speaking of music, what got you into music? Yo. Uh, okay. What got me into music was my Uncle John. He took me to see Pink Floyd. The Super Bowl. Or Symbol. Not Symbol. Super Bowl. Not the Super Bowl. The Sun Bowl. Jeez. <laughs> How much weed is in this weed? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I don't smoke weed. Call me. Uh, anyway. Edibles are starting to kick in. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, went to go see the Pink Floyd, and then my uncle was huge Pink Floyd fan. He had the box set from them and everything. Was that he, your first concert? That was not my first concert. Rex and Effects. Poof, I'm... Fort Bliss, Kaylee Q, not Kaylee Q, Power 102 Power Jam with the Daisy Dukes contest. If you look up Rex and FX, Daisy Dukes and all that, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Yeah. It's, it's like all late 90s hip hop and things like that. I want my, my aunt won tickets on the radio because we made her, me and my cousin made her pull over and call in for the tickets. Really? <laughs> and my mom and my aunt had no idea what the fuck Daisy Dukes was. Daisy Dukes is, if you look it up, right? Google that shit, Daisy Dukes. Daisy, uh, Dukes. Daisy Duke comes from Daisy Dukes from Dukes of Hazard, always wearing tiny shorts. Right. So they would have the Daisy Dukes contest where all these women with big fat asses and tiny shorts would shake their ass on stage. So mm-hmm. imagine 13-year-old me, 12-year-old cousin me, at this concert with our parents, and then, <laughs> all right, guys, Daisy Duke's time, right? And all these women come out with their fat asses shaking <laughs> everywhere. And my mom and my aunt are just completely horrified, like, what the fuck did we what bring them to? Going on? Yeah, that was that was my first concert. Yeah, that's the best thing ever. Was it? Was it these guys? There you go. All I wanna do is zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. Just shake your rump. I've heard this song. I just never knew who it was. Yeah. Shake your rump. They were here We are Daisy Dukes Yeah <laughs> Oh you can't see me But I'm twerking like a motherfucker right now <laughs> I knew I should have put the video camera for this <laughs> Oh that's dope man That was your first concert Yeah Yeah I was Too young for that uh, I bet <laughs> Whatever It has nothing to do with my development now I'm not a I'm not a horn dog that Anything at all Right I don't like Boobs and butts Mm-hmm. That much, <laughs> that much. Well, that's cool. So your uncle went to take took you to go see Pink Floyd. Yeah, so he took me to see Pink Floyd, and then I really got into Pink Floyd. 
he gave me the box set and everything, and then he passed away about a year after that. Uh, he got in a real bad car accident and died. Mm, so sorry. then it meant even more to me. Right. So all through my middle school, all I did was listen to Pink Floyd, and then I started slowly getting into other rock. Okay. Right? And then I slowly started getting into faster rock and heavier things. So it's progressing. Right. Uh, I had a friend, Jerry Archuleta. I don't know if you know Jerry Car Bombs. Um, he's been around in the music industry forever, too. Uh, well, you know, El Paso music, right? That's what we're talking about. Uh, I grew up with that guy before mm-hmm. I met Hector, right? And him and I were in bands together. We were in band. You know Marcus Allen, the painter? He's like a famous painter. He did like that famous painting of the downtown market. Look the name up. sounds familiar. Yeah, he's a famous El Paso artist. His son was our uh, drummer. Okay. Right? Interesting. Uh, this was, oh, man. Marilyn Madsen had just come out. <laughs> just like his like his second or third album. That's how old it is. And we started doing that. And he introduced me to like Metallica and he introduced me to Testament, which Okay. I'm a way bigger Testament fan than I am a Metallica fan. Oh yeah, dude. Me me and me and Mox, uh, my drummer, my cousin too. Um we always had the discussion too, because he's a huge Testament yeah. fan. It, technically, we, we you s- can't compare them. We started Metallica fans, yeah, because of his dad. He was like, yeah, and his dad's a huge Metallica fan. Yeah, shout out to Richie. love that guy. He's the one that showed us thrash and really got us okay. into the, you know, it's always a crazy. There was no, right? t- there was no turning back after that. <laughs> yeah, he's a huge Testament. I actually have an Eric Peterson poster signed. By oh, sweet! I have my one of my guitars signed by him too. Oh, cool. Home. But yeah, there's. I'm sorry, I fucking love Metallica, but when it comes. Comparing like those are real music when it real comes to metal, real yes. talent. Yes, and don't get me wrong, I'm I'm a huge uh, uh, Headfield fan. Yeah, fucking uh, subconsciously, I don't know how this fuck can happen, but when I started playing guitar, I I pick like him. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, most people pick like yeah. that or close fist. I pick with, with my the, middle finger. With the middle finger. Yeah, I've noticed that he did that. Does that. I'm like, I don't know if that was just like a self-conscious thing. As long as you don't pick like Marty Friedman upside down and <sighs> inverted. Down. Like if you're Marty Friedman does things just to be Marty Friedman. Yeah. He's genius too, but fucking yeah. hate. He's like the Ford of guitar players. Every time I he watch him. He wants to do yeah. things differently just to do things differently. I get carpal tunnel just watching that guy pick. Jesus. Weirdest ever. Yeah, dude. But fucking. Yeah. What are you going to put on? It's one of my favorite Testament songs. Oh yeah, dude. That's a great album. Yeah, there's no comparing Metallica and Tesla, man. Like, it's just night and day. Yeah, definitely. And they don't get enough credit. Ooh, how fucking heavy is that, oh my dude? God. I just came out my butt. <laughs> like, ah. Oh. Look at that. Ooh. Listen to those drums. Yeah. And then listen to Thomas Hack. Yeah. New Millennium Sinai. You're fucking right. Bro, right? What the fuck, man? Right there. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. I think you have something here. I think you're fucking right. Wow. I never made that connection. I think that's why. Just a little slower. It's a little, little slower. Almost the same. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But testament. Testament. Game changer. For life, man. Right? Yeah. I got to meet Chuck Billy and all them dudes. They were super cool. They were super stoned. I felt awkward standing there in front of them. They were just there, like, all stoned in their little tent. They had, like, a little tent backstage with a little light bulb party thing. and They don't get enough credit, man. Oh, they dude. really fucking don't. And I get they came afterwards. I get technically you'll, you'll consider them second wave. Yeah. Right? Same place, too. San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. But even in, when it comes to, like, you go, okay, first wave of the big four. Uh, Metallica, Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth. Metallica is the one on top, mm-hmm. right? Even though personally, I think it'd be Megadeth up there for me. I'm a big Megadeth fan. Oh yeah, me too. 
Uh, I, Again, I'm, I'm convinced. Unmatched in unmatched talent. Unmatched in talent. In like, yeah, everything. I'm, know, I'm like convinced if it wasn't for Megadeth, they wouldn't have technical oh. music afterwards. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, they fucking took it to the next level. Yeah. Because everyone else was just playing fast to be fast. Cause it was They're the thrash. band that made everybody have to memorize different parts in their right. songs. Instead of, uh, instead of bridge, like, chorus, bridge, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, bridge, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, bridge, chorus, fast. Fast, 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 yeah. fast, fast, half time, fast, yeah. fast, 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 now, fast, solo, it's... fast, 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 fast. Yeah. No. And with them, it's bridge, chorus, coda, break, hook, s- some yeah. other song somewhere some other in there. Thing. Right? Just go take a sandwich break, come back, and. Oh, that's a bathroom. That's song. Yeah. Marty Freeman's still playing the solo. Yeah. Go get a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a. It's crazy. Craziness. Right. And then when it comes to like second wave, what is it? Like Testament Exodus, Overkill. Overkill, yeah. But, uh, who else? Uh, fuck, I need a fourth band there, don't I? It's me, or kill. Oh, man. <laughs> I should have I don't know. I don't know. Who's another? I forgot the other one. But. The even with. Even God, I, if you do the Exodus Testament overkill, a lot of people won't have Testament up on the, on the top. Oh, no. They'll have it like w- Exodus. Exodus or overkill, yeah. Which I love Exodus. I love Overkill. Yeah, no, we need the same. There is no comparing. No, and, and you know what it is. Honestly, it, it's there's more people out there that care about aggressive feeling than technicality and musicality. I get that because right. I'm I'm that guy too sometimes. But how yeah. are you going to tell me DNR is not fucking aggressive? Right? How are you going to tell me fucking this song? Oh, yeah, dude. How are you oh. going to tell me this song the, when it starts? Dude. How do you not want to kick someone in the chest right now? Yeah. That's aggressive. Ah, oh, dude. <sighs> back when the symbol choke was a thing. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. It's coming back. It's coming it's, back. You know what? I'm going to do an all simple choke song. <laughs> You know what? A Meshuggah style Genty, nothing in four four, but everything feels like in four four with just symbol, just symbol stops. Just that's the one thing that drives me crazy about Meshuggah too. One thing that drives me crazy with Meshuggah is like it's not four four. Yeah, kind of sounds like it's four four though. Yeah. No, this song is in sixteen thirty two over forty eight, but it's in four four, dude. It's divisible all by four four. That's how you. That's how you get it. Yeah. Right. Because. Otherwise, how else would I be able to just nod my head to your entire album? Exactly. Right. <laughs> Dude, I'm so glad you said it because I, I always thought that too. Because we, I don't know if it's now anymore, but a couple years ago when Gent was really becoming a thing, right? Yeah. And I love Gent too. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love those bands too. But the fucking fans sometimes would uh, just. Elitist, man. Oh, they would fucking kill it for me so many times. Yeah. Where, uh, and again, I, I'm, I grew up thrash. I grew up punk rock. I, I didn't grow up yeah. fucking fancy. Shit, I listened to Offspring and Green Day and yeah. all that, The Clash, dude. I was literally dipping into everything rock or metal. Yeah. Right? Uh, and, and I remember Jerry used to make fun of me. Like, bro, you listen to Green Day. You listen to Offspring. I'm like, yeah. Dude, Offspring kicks ass. I love those guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever. If I'm stupid for liking them, then I'm fucking dumb. Call me I mean, fucking I mean, whatever. dumb. I'll be the dumbest Pay dude you know. Me fucking care. dumb, dude. Yeah. Right? You're the one listening to but, yeah, that's when they little start. Uzi butt nugget, whatever the fuck. <laughs> butt nugget? You know what I mean? if, there isn't a, if there isn't a little butt nugget, there should be. Little butt nugget. <laughs> I'm just going to just write a little. <laughs> yeah. But, huh. Nugget. Uh-huh. Butt uh-huh. nugget. Yeah. Little. Butt nugget. Right? <laughs> and then everybody in the background. <laughs> yeah, those fucking elitists, man. The fucking gen elitists were just like, oh, that's 4-4. Four, four. Uh, that's just fucking dumb rock or whatever. Yeah. It's kind of funny that you, we mentioned gen elitists and I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> just, it's a Kemper shirt. It's a Kemper way. shirt. Anyone, yeah, you guys can't I see it. I didn't get it at <laughs> NAM exclusively that no one else can get this shirt. So, But the, the be- <laughs> that's one thing, the, the beauty thing. Like even when you uh, talk about new gear today, which is amazing. The Kemper is phenomenal. You're still modeling old school stuff. old school amps. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you still go. Oh, what's that profile in there? Oh, it's a 
uh, fucking JCM. Right. What? Oh, it's model uh, VH fifty one fifty. Okay. Oh, it's a, a Mesa dual rack. All right. Yeah. It's anything new? Anything? No. No. What do you mean new? Well, this so, is new. <laughs> That's not new. Mm. It's a new piece of gear that makes yeah. you give the old sound of old gear. Yeah. It's a new idea on how to save your back, I guess. No, so that's the beauty of it. Yeah. It's, it becomes to the point where you don't have to carry so many fucking things, and that's amazing. Yeah, I saw a funny-ass meme the other day that said it was like back in the day, it was not loud enough, and it was like a two, four, twelves, a full stack. and then Yeah. And then it turns into, uh, <laughs> this might be loud enough, and it's just a four, twelve. <laughs> and then and now it's a 212 with a 50 watt head and it's, it's too loud it's too loud <laughs> it's yeah. too loud it's too loud I was like what the fuck it's the truth man <laughs> cuz I remember I remember when I first started I'm like oh, I need a full stack yeah I need two 4 by 12s oh everybody a fucking 100 watt amp you, you name me I, one I wanna, person I wanna be want to be fucking that, you know motorhead I mean? yeah I want a wall of amps all of them on no fucking dummy cabs I want all of them, to be yeah. real, because I remember the when I saw Motorhead, it was a, still to this day the loudest band I've ever heard in my life. I actually have a Lemmy story you had, with Hector. I think that was the same because the Motorhead and Testament, right? It was at the Coliseum. Yeah, Hector and I got backstage, and that's when we met them. But we were standing on the wall at the Coliseum backstage in the little hallway, and I was right on the corner, and I was scratching my eye, right. And Lemmy's running, almost running around the corner from the stairs with all these people to get to the stage. And he fucking just slams into my arm and pokes my eye with my own finger. Oh my God. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And, and he's like, oh, sorry about that, man. It's okay. You're all right. Okay, cool. I got to go. Like, I was like, bro, Lemmy just made me poke my own fucking eyeball. That's fucking cool, right? You were touched by God. I was, uh, I was poked by him. <laughs> I was I was used as an instrument to there's, poke myself. There's a bunch of girls out there like, yeah, you ain't nothing special. Yeah. <laughs> we were used too. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he poked us too. Yeah. Yeah, but it was my finger. <laughs> Damn. Nah, it was, it was that's I got these weird little stories all the time. It's always weird. That's fucking crazy. I get around. Like yeah. like Felicia. <laughs> Let me make you poke your own eye out. Yeah, so that was, that was interesting and weird and fun. Damn. And I got to do that. You got, you you saw God, man. I saw God. I saw, and then he left. <laughs> and I was faithless at that point. <laughs> it's like, I, I know what the real, <laughs> except Lemmy as my Lord and Savior. I wanted to ask him if he really was the editor of the school newspaper. <laughs> well, reference, that been the, reference to a movie. <laughs> that would have been the funniest thing if someone actually asked him that one day. Yeah. Do you know what movie I'm referencing? Uh... I can tell you Hector hates this movie. Which one? Airheads. I was going to say, is it Airheads? Yeah. yeah. I was at the two of the school newspaper. Yeah, I was like, Airheads, right? I okay. used to masturbate constantly. So <laughs> who would win in a wrestling match between God and Lemmy? <laughs> Trick, question. Trick question. God, God is, is Lemmy. Lemmy. He's a cap. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney King. Rodney King. <laughs> what are they saying? Rodney King? <laughs> He's that guy. <laughs> He's that guy. <laughs> I can love that movie so much. Oh man, sorry, I, I forgot what the fuck we're talking about. I don't even remember either. You're Stop. talking about Lemmy. Oh, Lemmy, yeah. Oh, he poked me in the eye. Uh, before that, we were talking about. Oh, so started with Pink Floyd. Yes. Gradually going up to heavier here's Metallica, Metallica, but here's Testament, Testament, and started really diving into like punky stuff. And oh, White Zombie was my fucking favorite thing, dude. White Zombie was your jam. White Zombie, dude. Was my thing Machine Head I got into Machine Head From In California I went to go visit Some family And they took me to Amoeba, Amoeba Music mm -hmm. And uh, One of the dudes there I told him I was like Hey man I'm just looking for some New jams This is what I listen to And he gave me The Burning Red From Machine Head Okay And dude I'm was, so glad I was stuck on them From that day forward I'm so glad That was the album You mentioned yeah. They can be real repetitive But it's cool I like because it Because Fucking they get so much shit for that album. It's all about the blood, the, the sweat, sweat, the, the tears. tears. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then fucking Message in a Bottle. Dude. 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 But I would listen to that driving everywhere in the yeah, car. People, 
people gave him so much shit oh, for this go. album. Okay. But it's such a fucking killer album. It is, dude. I love it. I fucking love it. Like, yeah. And I, I got, get it. And my wife was like never really into Machine Head, and then I started playing this album. And now every once in a while I get in the car and it's playing. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Because that's what I'm, like, I'm a big Machine Head fan too. Yeah. They're, they were one of my favorites. They're the they're the reasons I love doing like natural harmonics so much oh, sometimes. Oh, yeah. Because okay, yeah. they did it like so music. many fucking th- Yeah. It's like the. They were, they did natural harmonics like fucking Zach Wild does uh, pinch harmonics. Pinch harmonics, yeah. Every other time. Every other song, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. They can get a little repetitive, but it's cool. You know what it's I mean? It's cool. I, I, I like dig it. I love it. You know what uh, I mean? Other people don't. So whatever. Because I know they're I know they're they're big for the blackening. Yeah. That's like that's their thing. Yeah. And then they got so much shit because they're like, oh, they went new metal. I'm like, no, they were that way before. Before. Yeah. They were they were the cusp of new metal when was new metal was becoming new metal, and it was like they kind of got tossed into that same. Right. Exactly. But I mean, you can't really put them in the same thing as corn or Limp Bizkit or any of that shit. You know what I mean? They're they're just old enough to be an older thrash band, but new, new enough, enough to, to still be exactly. considered new metal. Poor so, dudes were born on the cusp. They were the cusp. <laughs> yeah. And that's why they got all that crud. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. Fucking awesome cover. The, the Blood, Sweat, Tears. One of my favorite Machine Head songs. It's all about the blood, the sweat, the tears. Just, just mm. aggressive. Nasty dude And then like He wasn't scared to write Simple shit No And I think that's what made him What he is Yeah Right And and I honestly believe I truly believe Although I don't know if it was ever mentioned But The way I hear things I really believe that Wayne Static Was a huge Machine Head fan I, I agree You know what I mean Especially From this album Yeah Especially yeah. from this fucking album. There's a lot of influence. In you can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember even there was, I think there was an interview. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Singer. Guitar player. Uh, Machine Head? Yes. Ruffling. Rob, Ruffling, yes. Uh, he had mentioned that there's no need to be complicated. There's no need to play crazy solos to write a good song. Sometimes it's, it's the... It's just the the, song, the complexity right. is the simplicity of it, right? You know, right? If you can make a song catchy, yeah, simple but catchy, and it sticks with you, yeah, that to me personally, that to me is much more important than technicality. Oh yeah, dude, that's where I come from, because I grew up listening to those bands, right? I said Machine Head. It was one of them too. Static yeah. X was another one where it's not about uh, being super techy, no, technical, yeah. or, but it's about being yo. musical, oh. uh, being amus- emotional in what you, the way you deliver your uh, music, right? But you um, can definitely hear the influence, man. Yeah, and then there was an interview with Wayne Static where he talks about writing simple. You don't have to be the greatest guitar player in the world to write a song. You know what I mean? To write music. You don't have to be the greatest musician in the world. As long as it's something that captivates you, it's going to captivate somebody else. Like we said, it has to be organic. It has to be organic. It's coming from you. It's coming right? from a place that's you. Or Sprouts. <laughs> or Whole Foods. <laughs> or Whole Foods. <laughs> or you grow it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> grow, grow what yourself? Grow. Hydroponically? <laughs> so speaking of that, speaking of all that, so we found we we know what got you into music. What got you into going? I want to play music. I don't want to stay in the stands anymore. I want to pick up an instrument. Meeting Jerry, Meeting Jerry, Jerry was a guitar player already, and he was like, "Hey, dude, let's jam together at my house." Just we would, dude, we would put on Metallica, whatever. You know what I mean? Make it a testament. We would just pretend to play like we were playing at a concert. Okay. Typical kid stuff, right? Yes, everyone did that. Um, I did that. And then one year, fucking I laugh at this story. Uh the convention center used to do like these big trade shows where they would have all kinds of shit from everywhere for sale. Okay. From CD players to fucking smoking devices to instruments to PAs to 
everything. shoes, everything. And it was at the convention centers. One year I went, I begged my mom to buy me a guitar. Okay. Because there was this one guy that had all these guitars. And I was like, I just, something, I don't care. And then my mom, I love my mom to death, but being the cheap ass, you know, parent <laughs> that doesn't want to spend money on a kid that's probably not going to do anything with it. I get it. She tells the guy, she's like, well, what's the cheapest guitar you got? Bust out with this completely covered in sparkly red paint. She's <laughs> like, dude, this thing was <laughs> literally made from Dorothy's shoes. Right? It's going straight from Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> so he's like, well, I got this bass. So I'll give it to you for 70 bucks. Sold. Okay. I had that bass for like four or five years. Really? And, and I was learning and playing on my own. And me and Jerry were playing and everything. And then I finally was like, I need to get better stuff. I ended up getting like a crazy midnight blue burst explorer from Arbor base. Right. Nice. Uh, shitty little amps. And then just started playing. And then we didn't know what we wanted to sound like. We thought we were Marilyn Manson at first. And we thought we were fucking corn. And then we thought we were Metallica. And then everybody's like, you know, everybody goes through the identity crisis. Right. Cause right? You, you, you literally just start playing what like, you hear. Yeah. I want to play what my favorite person plays. Right. Right. Things Subconsciously, like you're writing what you hear. Yeah. So with me, unlike Hector, Hector was inspired by real musicians and things like that. <laughs> Straight up. And that's why he is what he is. Real musicians, right? yeah, I guess. So. I was inspired by, this is fucking cool. I want to do this. Yo, man, I'm right there with you. You know what I mean? And Hector learned music from when he was two years old. Which is How wild. to start writing and how to start reading it. And I couldn't tell you what... A fucking E is on a goddamn staff. You know Same what I mean? Like, with me. I don't even know what I mean, a staff I is. I could. As long I mean, as I know staff is an infection and I don't want it. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Those usually smell weird. <laughs> they smell so good. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Hey, so, I mean, even now, four years, Hector struggled with me. And I, God bless the dude. I swear to God, I don't know how he dealt with my bullshit <laughs> all through 5393 and everything. And, he would always be like, bro, you're playing this wrong. Bro, you're playing that wrong. Bro, you're playing this wrong. And he was not wrong. I was playing it wrong. But that dude was technically, musically, and everything so far above me that I give thank to God that he had so much patience with me. It's funny you say that. But I think, I think the one thing that drew him to you the most... Was that you're you're the you're the person that's able to detach yourself from that, right? Because yeah, Hector did have this great upbringing with music. Yeah, like he knows he really knows his shit. Oh, yeah, you know, and that's that's the thing with a lot of guitars out there; they really know their shit. I'm not one of those, but I think what really what really benefits those kind of players are people like you. People like me, who are able to detach themselves from their, we're not, we're, you're not, you're not restrained to, um, theory, right? You modes. see things from a, you see things from a different angle. You see things from a different angle, right? You know, the <laughs> they'll write an equation and he'll go, hey, that looks like a cat. Yeah, <laughs> I like cats. I like cats, <laughs> and he'll go, oh, God, that does look like a cat. I never really thought of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. And and I think he could really appreciate that coming from you. Yeah. Especially since, even when you said, like, actually giving him actual feedback. Right. You know? You're not you're not debating him. You're not going, this isn't wrong. I'm right because this goes this way. This, this is that. Right. It's just like, oh, yeah, my bad. That is wrong. But what if we try this? This sounds cool. And I'd be like, that does sound cool. Yeah. Doesn't really make sense why it would sound cool. Right. But it sounds cool. Like whatever you said doesn't make sense because technically it's wrong. It's wrong. But it but sounds cool. Sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. <Right? laughs> Mathematically, this should not happen. Right? We're writing <laughs> jazz now. Theoretically, <laughs> this shouldn't happen, but it sounds killer. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's... People need that. Hey, you know what the best example of that is? Mm. Pantera. Really? You know, a lot of this shit doesn't make sense. No. Exactly. <laughs> like, no, you're right. You're absolutely <laughs> fucking right. Right? Like, because I, I had that discussion with him because he's, because hey, he, he had a hard time learning. Some you guys, of the solos you guys are in three, so 
you so get, yeah. like stuck on his theory that he was like, bro, I had to unlearn myself to learn this solo. That's what he told me. Yeah. That's exactly what and, he said. Yeah. Because, yeah, you guys are, in case you guys are living under a rock and you don't know, you play in 333, Pantera Tribute Band, which is hands down one of the best ones to do it. You guys in that Tampora Tribute Band? You in that uh, 333 band? Yeah. <laughs> Threes. <laughs> Three. You're, Three. Are you guys the triplets? <laughs> Triplet. Oh no. <laughs> Triple trouble. Are you guys from that pan- Panera Bread? Panera Bread. You guys were mm-hmm. Panera Bread. <laughs> yeah. You Panera like the car, the Ford 1980 whatever fastest production car ever made back then. Hands down, one of the best Panera tribute bands out there. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, no bullshit. I, I can tell you honestly, no one works harder than those dudes. And it's it it shows. Yeah, those dudes. It shows because I I'm not saying me. I'm not put, patting my own bag or anything. But definitely Hector, Javi, and Matt. Those dudes are beyond workaholics when it comes to stuff like that. Right. I mean, I was like, okay, this is cool. I'll yeah, fuck it, I'll play. But whatever. I, I think I think it's easier for you, especially when it comes to Pantera. Yeah. Because again, Pantera is not. They shouldn't make sense. Yeah. It's theoretically they shouldn't have made it what they did, you know. Yeah, the dude was using chromatic scales, not even scales. They just not da, even da, scales. Da, 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 da. Like what the what the it's fuck? Like all just in numerical Dime, order, basically. Diamonds like, himself was yeah. just crazy. Yeah, it was like dude, he okay. was the epitome of this. Sounds cool. Yeah, <laughs> this is fucking cool. This Let's use it. Cool. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. And he did it, and it sounds absolutely incredible. That's why That's why there isn't a band till this day that is Pantera. Right. There's no band out there that was ab- ever able to copy their style. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, that you say that because people say, oh, well, they're just a ripoff of X-Horder, right? I can hear You can hear the influence? A little bit, but it's not It's insane. not that. It's not, dude. And then when people tell me that, I'm like, okay. I get it. People X Harder like was doing it. They weren't doing them. it as good. You know what I mean? They weren't doing it as original. X Harder was still sounding like everybody else. You know yes, what I they mean? Were. They didn't have that special, just weird what the fuck shit. There you go. And see, so you can hear it like tonally. Not even like a little right, like right it, off. It's got that hiss, that high end. Gristles, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but they, they it's weren't not the, the same. They weren't the only bands doing that in the nineties. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and you know, so Dime was, you know, everybody argues that he had one of the worst tones ever, right? I, it, it's true. It's true, right? But like, for that style of music, it's not. You that's know what that's I mean? but, that's my thing too. Was yeah. it's always, I love Pantera and I worshipped them as a kid. Yeah, they're alright. Uh, <laughs> okay. There, there's. I always say this, and I still help the albums. When I, when we start, when we first started playing shows, well, when I start first started playing shows with March of Doom, yeah, we're kids. We're seventeen. I was seventeen. Everyone was sixteen. And I remember the. <laughs> I remember, like, I don't know if you remember the first show you ever played, but it's always yeah. nerve wracking because you don't know what you're gonna do. Right. You know, it's it's. It's like, am I gonna freeze? Am I gonna get nervous? Is it gonna all gonna go away and then, you know, yeah. am I gonna black out and the next like, thing you know the show's over? It's like taking a test. <laughs> am I gonna remember? I hope I don't forget the set list. You know, just stupid shit like that. Yeah. And then, like you're practicing and you're gonna go, uh, fuck. We need to have thirty minutes or twenty minutes. Our material's only fourteen. Or, yeah. Or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, we have to space some songs out. And are we going to talk to the crowd? What are we going to say to the crowd? Are yeah. we going to ask questions? We can't ask questions. Do we ask questions? What are we yeah. going to do? We're like, so, what's so, up? Hey, guys. Uh, so, like, what How's brings you to the show? You guys come here often? Yeah. Do you guys come often here? <laughs> come. Come? Come? I usually here? come at home. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you, it, uh, Cumba. Come to. Cumba. Cumba. I'm going to Cumba. <laughs> that's, that's a little inside joke. Me, Hector, and Devo, and everybody had Cumba. Cumba. This is porn they were watching one day, and this chick was like, I'm going to Cumba. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna cumba. So now that's how we say it. So every time I say cum, I in my cumba? mind I'm like cumba, 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 cumba. Is that, pre- <laughs> is that past tense? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a uh, it's past, future, present, and interdimensional. I guess <laughs> cumba. But what I would do before uh, shows is uh, I always grew up listening to to live albums. I love live albums. Live albums, yeah. Love live albums. Love live DVDs. My two go tos were always Iron Maiden Live After Death. Nice. And then Pantera Live. Ooh, which one? One oh one. Oh, one oh one? Okay. Yeah. Always. And that one, Pantera one oh one, Pantera Live, was my live Bible. That was what I would listen to before every show. And that was like, we're gonna do that. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. You know? Yeah. And is that wor- I worship Pantera, but getting older, you're like, yeah, you know what? As a guitar player, Dime's tone kind of did suck. Yeah, I don't think it sucked because he sucked as a guitar no, player. No, 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 no. Because I think it, it sucked because you couldn't use that for anything else if you wanted to. You know what I mean? And I think intentionally he did that. You Probably. Know what I mean? He was like, I want this tone specifically for this band, for this type of music. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I get that. Because you, you'd go, you'd ask yourself the question, if he did it differently, you know, and not, not style-wise, because he had his own style of playing with his with his hands. Yeah. But if you were to switch gear, right, use a different amp head, the pedals, yeah, all this other stuff, would it sound the same? Would right. it have the same feel? Would it have the same impact? Would it sound different to you? Would it feel different to you? Yeah. You know, so you can't, I can't even question. Again, it. right back around to which butterfly flapped its wings. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. To get to that point. Just anything anything could have changed it dramatically. Yeah. You know? And, and eventually it did. Yeah. Right? Look at Damage Plan. Do you like Damage Plan? I, I like Damage Plan. I mean. See, that reaction right there. <laughs> Right, it's still Dimebag. It's still Dime. It's still his tone. Doesn't really it work, doesn't in my opinion, it. for Dimebag for for Damage Plan. Damage Plan. It it didn't fit for me. It I, had some cool jams and everything, but it's not. You know I, what I mean? I it's, could see what he wanted to go for. Yeah, but I don't think he nailed it. Right. You know he, he because he's so long in that same headspace. You know, how do you change? How do you change? Right? But I think there's... I think there's different people that can pull it off. Yeah. And then do you want to change? That's the thing. Do you? Was he change? trying to push his identity into this and it just square into a round hole? You know I, what I mean? I think, yeah. I, no, I think that's exactly what happened with, with Damage Plan. Yeah. Was that he... Yeah, he tried to fit a square peg into a circle. Or yeah. Whatever that saying goes. Yeah, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Probably, it's, maybe. The only person I think that actually really was able to do that was Dino. Dino, yeah. Dino, I think, is a fucking chameleon. That that man can just go from one extreme to the next. One yeah. extreme to the next, and all of them are iconic in my mind. You know, I have a Dino story. You have a Dino story? I have a lot of stories. You met Dino? So. Okay, I'm interested. Let's go. A friend of mine, I don't know if he wants me to say it. Okay. Uh, a, a, a friend of mine was supposed to sing for... Uh, fucking, what's the uh, fucking Divine Heresy? Divine Heresy. Dino called him up, said, "Hey, I want you to for this project, this and that." Cool, got ready, get ready to go out. Trying to call Dino, couldn't get a hold of him. Could get a hold of him. Could get a hold of him. Dude was kind of just avoiding him, but he knows who he is from his previous projects, right? right? Uh, so he was like, "All right, well, I guess whatever." He's not gonna do it. And then he ended up getting Tommy vexed. Yeah, right, to do all that, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, it was a, it's a fantastic album. I yeah. think he was great in it, but yeah, was it worth the trouble? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so obviously he knows Dino well enough. We go to Nam, and we're at the Line Six booth. It's a, like a, a hall, basically. <laughs> Back when I was 450 pounds, 300 and whatever, I'm 220 now, right? I've lost a lot of weight. I was like, everybody would be like, dude, 
is Dino like your long lost dad? <laughs> right? Because I look like him with the long hair and the gut and the fucking shorts and the black shirt. We looked identical. Papa. Bro, we're standing there and my dude's like, bro, there's Dino. Come here real quick. So he pulls me out in front of him. He's like, yo, Dino, I found your long lost son across the fucking hall at the Line 6 fucking booth at NAM with 110,000 people fucking just packing this fucking place. Fucking Dino turns around and fucking sees him and he fucking just kind of turns around and bolts the other direction. So every time we pass by him uh, at NAM, we're kind of like waving at him like fucking idiot little kids like, hey, Dino. Uh, hey, Dino. Dino. Like, Ah, oh, dude, That's it, so fucking I'm pretty cool. sure he got fucking annoyed by that shit. Do you know if you're listening? Uh, it was his fault. Anyway, <laughs> he was listening. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I love the dude to death, but he can be a little. I've heard. I mean, yeah. it's, it's 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 been said. Yeah, you know, he, he can definitely be. Uh, it's been said. I mean, is it a uh, coincidence? Uh, a cara de pito. Is it a coincidence? He's the only one left in Fear Factory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you make your own decision there. Yeah, you know, I have a funny Fear Factory story from Nam too. That same year, we saw them at Whiskey, at the Whiskey Dick. Not Whiskey Dick. That's here. Fucking the Whiskey. Um, and fucking Mr. Belvedere was not Mr. Belvedere. The fucking principal from Goddamn, uh, Saved by the Bell. Mr. Belding. Mm. Whatever his name is. He's big, fat, bald dude now. <laughs> but he's really good friends with, like, Burton C. Bell and, like, all the dudes from... Really? So he was randomly there That's fucking weird. on stage with them and then in the back and... Right? And then fucking just because they were there that year, Caesar and uh, the ministry and everybody, they mm -hmm. showed up. And so we're all sitting there with everybody with fucking... In the same area with Fear Factory, Mr. Bill Balding... Whatever, whatever from fucking, yeah, yeah. it was just fucking weird, which is odd. Yeah, it was fucking. I was like, That's so this weird. is a weird fucking combination, right? But it was cool. I was like, what the fuck, this is cool as fuck. You know what I mean? Weird but cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Al, that was a trip. I love Uncle that guy. Al. I've known that guy for a while. Ministry man, that's yeah. a fucking killer ass band too. Yeah, Caesar man, Caesar got he he truly deserves that spot. Oh, right. I agree. Hey, he worked for it really hard. You know what I mean? I've known Caesar half my life. And uh, when he told me about that, I was like, dude, like, congratulations. You know what I mean? You deserve it, man. Yeah. And now he's half the face of ministry. He is I mean? half the face of ministry, which is even cooler than to, to. That makes it so much fucking cooler. Yeah. And like you said, deserves it. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, that was another. Just like when. when Tell you with, with the whole ministry thing, and like pissing razors. Fans of both bands, no idea there was connections. <laughs> yeah, yeah, connections. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. That's funny. And I'm like, what? Right? Nah. It's just like the uh, the East Coast hardcore thing, new metal thing, with uh, Kill Switch and Unearth and oh yeah, yeah, all those dudes. Were, uh, uh, what's the other band? Kill Switch, Unearth, uh, all those new metal core bands. They yeah. were all in bands with each other. Yeah, they were all right until they finally found their spots. Their thing, you know what I mean? But that's, they were all cool together. That's the way it was here, you know what I mean? Yeah. But <coughs> Yeah, for sure. I met half those dudes too. That's Actually, awesome, man. I think Byron lives in El Paso from Unearth. Does he really? Yeah. I know the Again, my friend that's a singer that was supposed to you know, he's good friends with him, too. That's nice. the only reason why I know that. I know <laughs> the, the vocalist for God Forbid. I'm sorry. I said on Earth and I met God Forbid, yeah. Byron. Yes. He he loves you, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He's cool, dude. My, he, he's gone to our shows every once in a while. When me and my girl used to work at Toys R Us, he showed up there one time. <laughs> and my girl couldn't help herself. She's like, please, can I take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> She's oh, a big cool. God Forbid fan, so. Yeah. And he was super cool about it. Super cool, dude. Great band. Sucks that they're not together anymore, but... Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, Doc is... Doc is with Bad Wolves. Bad Wolves now. And Tommy Vex left that band where he left or quit or I don't know. I think they kicked him out, too. I think so. I think that dude's a fucking other... Something. Something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something. Ain't no coincidence, man. I'm just saying. You yeah. Know? 
when it's uh, it when it's everybody's problem and not yours, usually it's your, your problem. problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I said if yeah, if all, if there's if the band still continue, you're the one that's still not there. Yeah, you might be the problem. Yeah, you know, clue. I'm gonna mail you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, whatever it is, what it is. You know what I mean? So but, your mom bought you a bass. Yeah, she bought you me wanted a, bass. a guitar. Though. I wanted a guitar because I didn't know. What a bass was, I just knew you did, you had you had a Nicky Six guitar, store. you know what I mean, and I didn't know drums. Everybody's new. Everybody knows what a guitar is, right? right? When you're a kid, you get those plastic guitars that you play, and everyone air guitars. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah. It, uh, thanks for thanks to I love you, man. Everybody slap at the bass no, now. Slap at the bass now, right? Uh, Not only that, like uh, I was telling Norman, I was telling Norm. Iron Maiden was one of those bands that switched it up for me too. Where I say you're air guitar and now you're now you're air basing. Air bass, Steve Harris. Air bass. Was there a moment where you're like, I wanted to play guitar, and you go, Nah, bass. I like bass. Yeah. Les Claypool. Ooh. Okay. When I got introduced to Primus, I was like, Dude, I picked the right instrument. Okay, yeah, it's a huge one. I was like, I picked the total right instrument. Primus was the band when I heard it. I'm like. Fuck! <laughs> yeah, like you mean I could have been fucking around like, in the I studio been this whole guy? time and doing nonsense bullshit, and people would like it. God damn it! <laughs> that guy is the most nonsensical musician. Everybody thinks Mike Patton is the most nonsensical music. Wrong. He is nonsensical, but are you fucking kidding me? Listen to that. I think the difference between Les Claypool and him is, yeah, they're both fucking odd, right? But he's he's doing it with his voice. He's doing it with the bass. It's just crazy. Yeah. It's and he I think he had the perfect people around him. Yeah. Oh, he had the perfect people that were like just as equally weird, weird and stupid and like I don't know. Because I'm and I, Hector can probably tell you one of the best concerts and I, I guarantee he'll say this and vouch for it. One of the best concerts we ever went to was. Colonel Claypool's Bucket of Bernie Brains Right uh, Albuquerque It was Les Claypool Buckethead Brain His uh, Claypool's drummer And Bernie Whirl Right One of the best Keyboarders Funk yeah. you, I mean Bernie Whirl is like The name When it comes to funk playing Right And keys um, And we were there On Les Claypool's birthday actually No way Yeah and It's actually on the internet uh, huh. That show His birthday in Albuquerque We were there and it was one of the best shows of my entire life. I could imagine. Right? I mean, some of the most nonsensical bullshit ever. Right? But, it's but God, it was entertaining. It was amazing. You know what I mean? And it's that is what was like, that rooted me into bass. Right. And I was like, how? No. Does he do that? You know what I mean? I think the cool thing about Primus and Les Claypool, I think, I'd like to imagine... I like to imagine that, yeah, you know, he had a, a typical upbringing musically and even instrumentally. Yeah. I like to imagine that he was just at home and he's just fucking around. And he starts doing that. Yeah. Just fucking around. He's just being dumb, yeah. wasting time. And this is one of the first times I've ever heard a bass with overdrive on it. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, I, I like, how is he doing I that? Like is he like imagine, turning his app all yeah. the way up and like making it sound like shit on purpose? I like to imagine <laughs> that he was just, he was just diddling around. Bored. Dude was so stoned. So fucking what to bored. Do he just did that. <laughs> and just so happened everyone else was around him. So and like, yeah, he was fucking around and be like, dude, that how, sounds how, cool. <laughs> how does that happen? How does that happen when you're just playing that? The guitar just, okay, yeah. And the drums just going with it. Yeah. You want to talk about nonsensical playing that guitar player? Yeah, with John something I can't remember his name. I remember his name. Um, some of the craziest leads. I guarantee he never played the same thing twice. Yeah, you know what I mean. For sure, he did a couple takes, and they were like, "That's a good one." And Let's do, do that. How do you consciously go? The song's gonna call. My name is Mud. Yeah. No, he was just fucking around. Oh yeah, dude. Right. I think that's the beauty the of beat, Primus. Beat, 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 beat. I think that's the beauty about Primus is. I'm a big fan. Some of my favorite songs from bands are the songs that sound like they're just jamming. Yeah. It wasn't made to be a 
top 40 hit. Right. It wasn't meant to sell records. Mm-hmm. It was just... It's not cookie cutter. It wasn't cookie cutter. It was just organic. It just happened. Yeah. It's that weird shaped cookie that everybody's like, the fuck? I don't want that. Like, uh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah I want that. I want, that. I want that weird ass <laughs> fucking cookie. That's yeah. my cookie. Yeah. You know, and Primus is a perfect example of that. They're the band that all their songs are just yeah. that. Yeah. The whole band is just that. Yeah. So that's a cool. Yeah. And then from Claypool, I started getting into like, well, what kind of other bass players are there? Right. So then I started really getting into funk. Okay. You know, Larry Graham, Victor Wooten, uh, Bailey. Jacko Pastorius was a big changer for me. You want to talk about harmonics, natural harmonics? Jacko Pastorius, right? That dude basically invented using harmonics. And so I'll tell you a funny story. And and Hector would always trip out and he would always try to copy it. Popping and slapping is, to me, like very, I love doing popping and slapping and funk right. and everything. So then I started integrating popping and slapping with harmonics. Okay. So... I've learned from Hector actually, which showed me how to do this little weird harmonic thing where he would hold down the string and then tap it and then rub his pinky right, on the right. string over the harmonic over the pickups, mm-hmm. and it would be like right. So I was like, "That's fucking cool." Can I do that on the bass? Kind of. If you reverse it, so what I'm doing now is the same idea except backwards, backwards. right? My right hand is holding right on the string, like just barely touching it. Mm-hmm. And I can pop and slap it still. But on my left hand, I'm using all my natural harmonics. Mm. Right? Okay. So I can mix pop and slap with harmonics, with harmonics. just like Zach Wilde would or anyone else. And I don't know if anybody else does that. Uh, but I've never. Yeah, I, I don't. I just. Don't know if it's a technique or not, but it's my technique. It's your technique. Yeah. It is yeah. a technique. And Hector it's would always be like, how the fuck do you do that? God damn it. It's like, you would pick up the bass, he'd be like, fuck, dude, how do you do that? It's the motherfucking bunny slap. That's yeah, what that I said, is. I don't know. I accidentally came up with that it's because of you. Bunny <laughs> slap. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's cool. I, I love, yeah, I don't know why. I just love bass. Bass, 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 bass. No, but it, that's the cool thing about it is that uh, to me, it sounded. Hearing you and just even watching you just play. Yeah. It it feels organic. It sound, looks organic. Sounds organic. And it, it sounds and it looks like you're very passionate to play the bass. Yeah. And it's funny that you say my sound is organic. So it really is. It is. Now let me break down my rig to you. Right? <laughs> and you're going to be like, what? I literally use a Tech 21 preamp and a power amp. No pedals. Really? Maybe a tuner. That's it. That's it. It's all in the hands. It's all in the hands. No shit. All in the hands. No pedals. The only thing I use pedals for every once in a while is in the Pantera Tribute if I need to get a little bit of overdrive or something. Right. Or that. But even in the Pantera Tribute, I don't use pedals. And I need to because I'm trying to get trying this to get tone. It. But I really listen and I use my fingers to change the tone. That's impressive. Right? And so I've had to really learn how to use my short little stubby fingers uh, with Hector. Again, Hector's the reason why a lot of me is what I am. When we started going into lower tunings, I started tuning lower. Low bass strings are like sloppy and floppy. They're just and, yeah. <laughs> so you can't play hard. Bro, you have to be pissed off. Right, because you're going to be sharp or flat every single time. So I had to learn in 5393 and here after the wave how to play upside down backwards. Because this was before A strings. <laughs> My right? brain hurts. So, yeah. <laughs> Hector was tuning down. Right. Right to the point where my low E was now his. It was weird, right? So on my five string, I had to play the high E, like it would be E B E A D, right mm-hmm. on my five string bass. Mm-hmm. It's like an octave below oh, standard yeah. E, right? Before I did that on the A string, it was B E A D, right? But then the E and the B had to be switched, switched. because of the way he was tuning. So if he was playing a standard, you know, chord, I had a bar chord or anything, or just, uh, what is it, third, fifth, whatever, I'd have to play it upside down. Okay. Right? So you guys are almost mirroring each other. We're mirroring each other, right? And so I had to learn how to do that. And then we finally were like, fuck this, 
my bass is gonna go down to an octave below a standard E when he does the A strings. So now everything is reverted back to normal. Oh. But an E below a standard E on a five string bass is an incredibly large fucking string. Oh, it's a fucking cable wire. Right? So I had to learn how to delicately play the same thing I was playing as aggressive as I possibly could. It was like I had to relearn a lot of times how to play for whatever style we were playing. Right. Right. I mean, Hector did too. He had to learn how to play it on eight string and everything. But everything Hector did, I had to do upside down and backwards. That's crazy to me. Yeah. And that's where his patience would really come in because he's <laughs> like, bro, I, you know, I know you're doing this and I know you don't really have the full on knowledge to do it. And I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to teach you. So he'd be real patient with me. Wow. And, and now he's very nonchalant. You know what I mean? Over the years, he's become like me, I guess. Very cool. Just well, be he, like, he did mention to me. I said, I, I've, I've only used to be gung ho. Like, yeah, this has to be fucking right. That's what he told you me. have to do. That's, this like that's this. what he was stating in the previous yeah. episode when I had him. And he said he was like that. Yeah. But then yeah. he realized, you know, it's like I said, there's no such thing as everyone's going to be perfect and love right. each other and everything like that. But that. you got to work with each other and you got to deal with it. And he worked with me and he dealt with me. Although he would get upset. I didn't care. Right. I was there learning. Right. From someone that I I respected, you know, right, what I mean? right. So he would get mad at me, and I would get mad at myself for like, fuck, I can't believe I'm fucking this up. You know what I mean? But it's cool that you had that um, guidance. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was your butterfly wing right there. Yeah, he was. He literally. You know what I mean? He flapped his wings. He flapped at me. his wings and just it felt so good. Took it. it was angelic. <laughs> but yeah, that's literally how I got here is through that process. And right, I I don't have that. I listened to this and it made me this and uh, no the mine was hearing hearing I, I went everywhere hearing your story, it's very eclectic, yeah, but it's very refreshing to hear though. Oh, cool, that's good. You know, <laughs> yeah, and it's really cool to have someone that has that kind of story upbringing. Yeah, because. Um, because, like I said, I had Hector on. I had uh, Manny Lozano on. And both of them are incredible yeah. guitar oh, players. Manny's amazing. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Insane. And they, their stories are so different, you know. Uh, if you were to hear my own story, it'd be completely different. It would be more relatable to yours. Oh, okay, cool. You know? Way more relatable. Um, Norman's episode, the same thing. You know, he's very structured. I gotta go back and listen to uh, He's one that I haven't heard yet, and I got to listen to his. It's, it's coming soon. Okay. <laughs> oh, then that's why I haven't that's heard That's what you heard. I was, I was like, but wait a very good I didn't one. even know it was out. Okay. Um, but, you know, so there's there's players out there. There's, if there's anyone listening right now, it's new. Uh, obviously, I've been doing it for a while. You've been doing it for a while. Most of the, all, all the guests have been doing it for a while, but if there's anyone new listening to the show, or they barely started the band, or they want to start a band, hearing these stories, I think, are really going to inspire people. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Even if it's just one. I hope, yeah. or two, one of them's someone who's classically brought, and he goes, oh, you know what, I learned how to play classical guitar, but I, I love metal music. Yeah. I want to start a band. You're going to hear people like Hector. You're going to hear people like Matt. You're going to hear people like Norman, and you go, oh, shit, they did it. I can too. Yeah. Or you're going to have that punk rock kid who just bought a guitar just because he found it cheap, learned a po- couple power chords, and is just trying to play them as fast as they can. Yeah, yeah. And they'll hear this episode, or they'll hear um, fucking uh, Kevin's episode. Kevin Armstrong. Thor, Thor himself, <laughs> the mighty, the mighty Thor. Dude, they'll, I, I they'll, was doing sound for that guy when he was just a kid, man. I'm saying they'll they'll hear his story and they go, "These guys aren't as different as me. I can do it too." Yeah, you know, because that that's what's important. Yeah, you know? inspiration, man. It's Inspirado. inspirational. I said, hearing your story, knowing it was so eclectic, it really was everywhere, which I love because it's 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 again it's that. Um, uh, fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? Unrealistic reality. Yeah, it's unrealistic <laughs> reality. 
It's yeah. that spontaneity yeah. that you need in your life sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know, because you can be structured as much as you want, and you can try to plan things as much as you want, but it's never going to come to plan. It's never going to go to the plan, and that one spontaneous moment or person yeah, or idea just changed everything. Right. Because who wants to live a monotonous life? Exactly. Right? No. Some people think they do. I mean, people that listen to trance music and EDM, I guess. Stain. <laughs> Stain. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> since I have changed any style of music. It's been a while. You know? But listening to that, listening to your story, I said it's inspiring. It's a, it's a breath of fresh air. And it, it shows, dude, it shows... And the person that you are, it shows in your personality. It definitely shows in your playing, Thank which <laughs> is is cool, you know. I worked really hard it, on, I, I I really, I don't know what point in my playing life where I was like, I don't want to depend on technology and other things to make my sound the way it is. I want to be able to pick up any bass and sound like me. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so I really, like, I made it a mission Right. And Hector can tell you, like, my tone, I can represent on anything because it's me. Right. And, and no, I've, gotten, exactly. I've gotten so much positive and good criticism about my tone. I get people come up to me like, bro, what are you using? What pedals are you using? This and that. I'm like, I just put on my little preamp and my amp. I'm like, me, just that. Me and Mox <laughs> do it all the time because Mox, Mox plays bass too right, now. Right. And. Uh, when we saw you guys with hereafter, hereafter, hereafter wave, uh, we, me and him both were trying to go over the stage. We're like, what the fuck is Dave using? Yeah, and we're like, there's nothing here. <laughs> yeah, just that growl and that heaviness. And that's what I was just, telling him, like, dude, it's them fingers, spent, baby. Yeah, it's them fingers. I would say as much time as people spend doing arpeggios and you know scales and everything, I spent that much time really feeling how my fingers reacted to the strings of the bass. Right. And then I was had to learn, not to relearn and relearn because we would change tunings. And with bass you can't just do that. Right. Right? You know, strings it's a, have to at, at the end of the day, the bass is a percussion instrument yeah. almost. Yeah. And, and that's I I treat myself my bass very percussively. No, you can tell yeah. with the tone you have, the way you play. Yeah. If I were to just have a video of you playing, it's just video, no audio. I can hear what I can hear what you're doing. Yeah, visually you see it, you know, and and you you can you could tell that you played in a percussive way with five three, you heard it. Yeah, you know, and that's what I think made it so. It makes it so special. Yeah, you know, and it's super cool that you say that, and you did it, man. You have your tone. Yeah, you know, that's funny. We had a we did a competition for Submarian Records. Mm-hmm. And the dude, the the judge was like, "Okay, we're gonna judge you, and then you get to go and uh, triumph over shipwreck." Ended up winning that. They they get to go and play the rock star. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, you know, I think I think we did that too. Did you? I think I so. There was a lot of bands that did that. There was a lot of bands. Well, the the dude gave us gave everybody feedback. Yeah. Right. And I kind of felt bad for the guys because we played and we killer and everything. It was fun, and. The first entire paragraph of our description is about my bass tone. No shit. He's like, great band, great opening, that bass tone. What the fuck? Like, ridiculous. All kinds of, just write all kinds of shit. And then at the end, like, very good band, great leads, great vocals. Thanks. What is, what is, <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, what, sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> what does he mean, though? Because when I say ridiculous, I mean in a good way. <laughs> no, that's what he meant, like. Oh, he meant it in a good yeah, way. Yeah, like ridiculously. No, well, that's that's another thing I want to talk about too. Was okay, five three again. One of my all time favorite bands of all time. Thank you. And any chance, any chance in hell, I might come back. Maybe not in hell. <laughs> What's below? What's hell? below hell? <laughs> right, fucking seventh layer. Because I'm telling you, man. If we we. Honestly, you know, it, it, we could bring it back. Just, it, just I, I, I honestly, I believe it wouldn't be the same. You don't think so? I don't think so. You don't think you'd catch that magic again? No, because at that point, we were in a different headspace. Okay, I could, I, 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 I could I'll, definitely. I'll, I'll tell you this. I could definitely understand that. I'll, I'll give you the same thing that I told, that I said about Damage Plan. 
right? Fitting a square into a round hole. I definitely get that. It was perfect back then. In the headspace that we're at now, we're not in that same. You know what I mean? It was a different. Yeah. You can even say you were different people back then. Yeah. We could probably play them and the songs and everything. But even now, playing that now would be different. Would come out different. Right? I could I could understand that. I right. could definitely fucking understand that. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, watching your favorite band live but just just one with show their most modern album and then they play their first album songs and very couple and it's just doesn't, doesn't sound the same. That's true. You know what I mean? Just I growth. Fuck with that. You know what I mean? Growth and individuality and separate paths and separate uh lifestyles. You know what I mean? Everything affects everything. I, under- I totally yeah. understand that. Yeah. Totally fucking get that. As much as I really, really want to bring back 593, I agree with what Hector said. It wouldn't be the same. The The rest of the fans are yeah. really wanted to come back too, but I know. As a fan, I, I get that. Yeah. I really do. Which brings us to hereafter. Yeah. Which, when I saw who was in it, I got immediately fucking excited. Because I had two of my favorite bands come to one band. Cause Are you much, talking about Hank of the Destruction? I fucking love Hank of the Destruction. Moose. moose. Chocolate moose. Yes, sir. The moose knuckle. Because as, as, as far as, if we were to just go local bands. Yeah. 5-3, number one. Hank, number two for me. Because I remember the first time I saw Hank of the Destruction, Moose. 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 I... Couldn't believe what the fuck I was hearing. Yeah. What I was seeing. Because it was the perfect balance of kind of thrashy. Yeah. But still modern. But still melodic. Yeah. And heavy as shit. Yeah. Thrashy music with riffs to fucking kill your fucking face. Like just fucking riff salad all day. Bro. Like riff buffet. Yeah. It was like... And as a guitar player, that's all I want. I want an all-you-can-eat buffet of just nothing but nasty-ass riffs. Yep. And Dave Old brought it 24-7 still to this day. That man is incredible. Again, another... And and speaking like that, it's two of my favorite bands coming together. 5393, Hank of the Destruction Moves. Three musicians that I really look up to. And three people who I think have their very distinguished sound and tone. Oh, yeah. Dude. It's funny that you mentioned that. Just like how you have your own personal tone. Yeah. If I could just hear a clip, I'm like, a, a clip of it, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's, that's, that's Dave, dude. Yeah. And same thing. If I, if I told Hector this, like, dude, when you solo, I know it's you. You know it's him. I know it. Yeah. Just by the tone, that first note, when you come in. That's funny because you and I are... Very that's, similar like that. That's dude. him. Yeah, I do that when, all the time. When Dave does his little fucking... Oh, his little uh, runs and his little runs signature... And signature little yeah, vibrato little thing. Pulls and everything, yeah. You know what's Davo. Yeah. Like, you hear it. And even if it's just... you can, It's very apparent when they solo. But even when they're just doing rhythm guitar, yeah. you know it's their hands. Yep. So... That to me was super interesting. Like, okay, I really want to see what this band's gonna sound like because I know what they all sound like individually. Right. I'm curious to what they're gonna do together. Yeah. And again, you guys managed to do something ahead of your fucking time. <laughs> Cause I'll listen to here after the wave. I'm like, this is fucking great. But I know people aren't ready for this yet. I can give you an example. A perfect example of what you mean by ahead of our time. You know who Vola is? Yeah. Okay. Have you heard their New Year's stuff? Mm, no. Head Mountain Sideways. End of that song. And then listen to Spiritual. End of that song. And you're going to be like, whoa, what the fuck? The Spiritual from Here After the Wave is my favorite song. Yes. Because the Mine end too. of that song... Fucking just gets my balls hurting, man. God damn, I love that song. There you go. This is Lola. Head mount sideways. Dun, 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 dun. 
So at the end of spirituals, at the end of spirituals, they're very similar. The stylistic writing. And it's funny because I called Hector right away. I, I sent him a song. I was like, bro, have you heard this song? The spiritual, bro. He's like, dude, I know. <laughs> what the fuck? I was like, exactly. So, and then my wife was, my wife actually had mentioned this. She's like, yeah, you guys were writing stuff that was ahead of your time. Yes. And, he, and then my wife said the same thing. She's like, you guys have always been like that. I'm like, yeah, but fuck, man, I want the money too. <laughs> yeah, you guys. <laughs> like, why can't we be popular and famous and make money too? We're doing the same thing. Yeah, because it's like everything else. When I, from the her to your after, I'm like, ah, damn it, they did it again. They fucking <laughs> did it again. I was like, just be cool, guys. <laughs> just be cool, I say. Just be cool. Just be cool, man. But you guys did it again where it's, it's ahead of its fucking time. And I swear to God, years from now, that same sound's going to come up, and I'm going to go, yeah, Hereafter did it first. Yeah. First. Can I comment? Can first, I put a yeah. comment on your post? First. <laughs> it's just like, damn it. Like you, it's because the vision is, you guys' vision is... Way ahead than anybody else. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, and I, you know, be honest. I'll be honest. It's like ninety nine percent Hector. It really is. No, we put our me. input and we do everything we can, but that dude's got a brain. A no, mind trust, on him. Fucking just, just uh, to to say I know him is a huge blessing. Yeah. Oh, I guess yeah. you want to say, um, you know. You've had him here to have a conversation with him to to be cool with him to to message the dude and yeah. message back and him. <laughs> I'll post my stupid videos and he'll be like, "Dude, that was killer." I'm like, "Please don't, yeah. just <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> please, just no." Yeah. You ain't gotta humor me. It's you okay. don't gotta humor me, dude. I no, <laughs> <laughs> but like, his vision when you talk to him, it's just like you can tell this man's living twenty years in the future. Yeah. He's just waiting for us to catch up. Yeah. And my favorite thing about him is because of that, he can be very awkward. <laughs> and I love that about him. I love how awkward and quir- quirky he can be sometimes. Like, it's just the most beautiful thing. He's such an amazing musician, amazing person, amazing this and everything. <laughs> and then he just flips and becomes like this awkward dude that is socially incapable of... I and it's weird, and then he'll just flip, and then get on stage and be like, the baddest ass ever. He'll just be the baddest, right? And I, that's what I love about him. I love that so much about him, right? And, and, and it's funny. We're very, we're very opposite. I'm, no, I'm it, the the happy go lucky. But I think talk to I think that's what makes that relationship work so well. Yeah, is that you guys are polar opposites. Yeah, just like you guys, like you had to mirror him with yeah. his plane upside down. And, you guys mirror each other in personality. In personality, yeah. That's a good you know that's a good comparison, yeah. But sure. it's that yin and yang that's just hey, it works and it works for a reason. And uh again, as a fan, being a fucking fanboy right now, seeing you guys and the chemistry you have, especially on stage, is electrifying. Yeah, I could show you something. <laughs> you know? I'll pull it up right now. But uh yeah, dude. I mean, people have told me all the time, like, dude, I can see you guys are best friends. Yeah, on stage. like, like you, you, you give that perception. You go on stage, you're like, oh, I hope these guys are actually really good friends together. That's my favorite picture of us ever, forever. There you go, man. I can't remember what city that's in. That was Pantera trivia, but that's awesome. I mean, that's the best picture. Yeah. I, I have this like front and center on my phone all the time of me and him. I don't know if he knows this picture, but it's it's literally just reminds me of how amazing he is to me, and I love that guy. No, I'm telling like, you, man. It, it's 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 cool to see that the idea and the chemistry you guys have on stage is actually real in real life. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's so cool to hear as a fan, and and as a, as a colleague, a friend, it's just like, yeah, these guys. It's awesome to see, like. It's organic. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I'm sure he feels the same way. If we can inspire two dudes to be friends and make music together and whatever, it's great. That's a goal in our life, you know, to inspire. Who doesn't want to inspire? You right? right? No, like I said, that's the, one of the most important things is 
when you start a band is to make those bonds. Yeah. Because yeah. if they're not there, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. Yeah, who wants to do something that's not fun? And uh, if I've had the privilege of jamming with a lot of people and having those bonds and uh, said my guy's always going to be Max, right? Yeah. Max. Regardless, we, we are we are blood. Uh, we are family by blood, but besides that, you could take that away. We're, he's still... You're still friends. He's still one of my best friends. Yeah. You know? That's cool. And That's great. It's just... We, it correlates together. It's cool to see that from other people. Yeah. All right, man. Damn, we've already gone two hours. Oh, shit. That's awesome. It was like 10 minutes. <laughs> I want to keep you longer. We definitely got to do another part. Sure. Because I had... I got a ton of stories for you, man. I have, I have notes that I, I didn't have, even touch. I've met so many people. Uh, I'm not like anything special or anything. I've just been fortunate enough to meet a lot of people. So right. I'd be more than happy to give you more stories. Please. We need them. Yeah. Because that Lemmy, Lemmy story was yeah. fucking Lemmy amazing, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That has to be animated. So, and someone needs to animate that. Right. <laughs> just What the <laughs> fuck? My eye. God damn it. Oh, sorry about that, oh, mate. <laughs> Are you all right? You're all right. I got to go. Okay. Excuse me. I got to go. Thanks for blinding me. Be I'll motorhead. See you. I'll see you on stage. I'll see half of you on stage. Half of the stage. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, that was, that was funny. Right? That'd be the funniest fucking thing ever. It's like, dude, it's fucking Lemmy. It's that dude that poked my yeah. eye. <laughs> Bro, you and I got beef. <laughs> <laughs> you and me, dude. Fucking Lemmy beef. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your time, man. Anything you want to plug? Uh... Everything. Listen to everyone. Give everyone a chance. Right? Don't be a dick. Just be cool. Just be cool, man. Just be cool. You know what I mean? Any future projects coming up? Future projects. I don't know. We're gonna start warming up the Pantera Jerby here soon. Awesome. Yeah. And then here after the wave we gotta dust the get the moss out of the closet, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you guys I'm telling you, had every game, you just have to continue going at it. Yeah. Eventually. The world's going to catch up to you guys. You know? Yeah. But you guys are living in the future. I see it. I hear it. It's just, I don't I don't know. Some people aren't there yet. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I have, like, I write my own music and things like that and everything like that. I've only ever put out one thing actually out there for people to hear. And actually, we were listening to it at one time. Uh, uh, Omar, my drummer from here after the wave, and Hector. And we were on Reverb Nation just trying to see what's everybody's playing and what's doing. And then my song came on and I didn't say anything. And everybody, they were like, what the fuck is this? Because I don't have a singer or anything on it. Mm -hmm. It's just me goofing on my fucking guitar and my eight string. I don't even use a pick. I play the guitar with my fingers. You gotta send me that, man. I don't think I've heard that. It's on Reverb Nation, Finkel is Einhorn. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That is perfect. Finkel is Einhorn. Yeah. I have Finkel. another thing that I started too. It's called Maleche. Bad milk. <laughs> yeah, Maleche. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. You, you want to compare Hector's brain to mine? Dude. <laughs> uh, you're going to go from Check this out. a perfectly Speaking straight room to a fucking messy room. Speaking of that, I was having lunch today. And um, I don't know why. This is the way my brain works. Uh, oh no, I was like, I was taking, I was taking my dad to an appointment, and they had the view on the television for some reason. Yeah. And for some re- reason, the name Ellen DeGeneres came into my head. Huh. She's not even on the view, but I thought, you know, it'd be a fucking badass bad name, band name, Ellen Degenerate. Degenerate. <laughs> Ellen Degenerate. That sounds like a good, like a punk. Band yeah, with I'm like, like I'm some like, raunchy ass chick. Dude, I'm, like, I'm Ellen Degenerate, and dude, she's like, that, that's looks the, like Ellen. That's Degenerate. exactly what my head was like. That would be a fucking awesome punk band. Fuck yeah, with a female front woman. I'd go see that. <laughs> I just for the name, I'd be like, I'm going. I don't care how terrible it is. I'm gonna go see this. Yeah. How the hell do you spell Finkel? F I N K L E. Is it separate? Space I S. <laughs> I found it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you should have done it all together. Finkel's Einhorn. Finkel's Einhorn. Finkel's Einhorn. Finkel's Einhorn. <laughs> Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Einhorn Finkel. Einhorn is Finkel. Yeah. I had just gotten a brand new Ibanez 8-string guitar and I was all happy. You weren't using the pick? No. 
This is heavy. Right? Very kill switches at the very beginning here. I was like really into kill switch hardcore when I was doing this. This is dope. I like the tone. Oh, thank you. Very fucking just. Oh. And then. Oh, that's a nice little fart. <laughs> Alexa fart. Oh. It's all through. Right, and I just copied and pasted a couple parts together, and it's not really finished. I just wanted to put something out there. That, that is tasty. <laughs> and then everybody's favorite part is this next part coming Doggy. up. Right here. Everybody's like, "Dude, how did you even do that?" I was like, "I don't know. It's something I just figured out I could do on the guitar." And this is coming up right here. Oh my God. I wanted to write something I could jump to. Oh man, that is tasty. And that's nothing special, it's just really easy, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's a Zach Wild right there. <laughs> Should be right here. If anybody want to sing on top of this, let me know. Oh. Hey, that's all that's it killer, is. man. And then I just change it a little bit on the second part where the guitar stops halfway and then the bass just the bass and then the guitar and the bass. Like, I love this, dude. Yeah, this is really good. I have no idea how to play any kind of lead. Anything, I was just like, eh, this note sounds all right. That's tasty, man. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, I like it too. Right here. Bass. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Start. Bass. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm way ahead of myself. Okay. Dude, I need more Finkel Zeinhorn. <laughs> Finkel Zeinhorn. I yeah, need more. My wife's, she's like, I keep telling her, I'm like, God, I want to write some more stuff. She's, well, let's buy some more gear. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm an adult. I have adult money. <laughs> it's not like when I was a kid. I was like, oh, I wish I could buy this. I wish I could buy that. I'm like, oh, yeah. Dude, you have to, man. Fucking, this is fucking great. Yeah, I just need to find a singer. I need to get Hector to write some leads over it. I need to get you to play guitar on it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. My, if you can't Please. play my Please. guitar lines, then Please. throw your guitar away. I'm uh, trying to. I'm going to sell I I all it. my shit. <laughs> what kind of singer you want? I don't care. Anybody that wants to. Whatever. It's somebody shit. heavy, somebody vocally, somebody whatever. I might fuck with it. <coughs> Go for it. I think you can download it. Oh, yeah. I might, and I'll see what I can make with it. Yeah. I need more Fingles Iron, man. And you yeah. should. I'd have, if anyone should be releasing shit, it should be you, man. I would like to. Like everything. Yeah, like everything. My my disco tech EDM we, we metal li thrash. We, we live in a we live in a world projects. today that it's so easy to do that now. Yeah, it is. It really is. There is no excuse not to do it. Yeah, you know. And Before. it's funny because I, I saw that evolution. I worked at Guitar Center for 13 years. Yeah, and dude, I, I saw bet. the evolution of not being able to record at home to, to anyone spending could 200 bucks and be able to just record at home. Yeah. Like nothing. You know what I mean? Literally like it, 200 it, bucks. It blew my mind. You know what I mean? Seeing all that technology and everything. I'm a big tech freak. So that's what I'm saying, dude. If anyone can do it and do it well, it's you. Some guy. Because <laughs> fucking anyone, anyone can just get an interface to connect it to a guitar, buy a fucking VST, Dude. start playing and get a... Uh, it, let me break that recording down to you. I literally recorded into a little interface, like a little two-channel interface with my... What did I have? I had a guitar processor that I bought and I ended up selling it. Uh, uh, and then I used Easy Drummer. Okay. Like the, yeah. the cheap version of it for nothing. And did my bass. And that's it. 
And I just mixed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it sounds killer, dude. Yeah. It sounds this that was, mix. That was years ago, man. I was still getting brand this, new into mixing. This mix sounds better than what most people have out there. Okay. You know? <laughs> like, uh, sure. No, it does, man. <laughs> Thank you. And imagine if you were to just really focus time on it. Like really devoted to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to. You know, you know what I mean? And I'm going to. I really am. You know, this year I'm really. Because that's something I've been trying to do is just play more. Just play more. Yeah. Just play more. You Not know. because uh, you need to, but because you want to. Exactly. Right? So that's I what I'm mean, like, you know, I'm going to learn this song today. Yeah. Why not? Right? Because when you do something because you need to, it's not as fun. It's not as fun. It doesn't right. come as organic again. Yeah. And then once you just start doing it, that's when, I mean, th- that's how it started with me is just you were practicing certain things and next yeah. thing you know that practice it was like hey this was a song cool as a song yeah or a riff yeah and you made that and now it's a song yeah you start evolving your right. way of thinking I'm, I'm going yeah. I'm trying to get back to that yeah of just like let's just make things happen again yeah not overthink it for sure but appreciate your time man yes sir we gotta do this again there's more stories to be told there's more s- bands to be talked about oh yeah hopefully we have more Finkel Zeinhorn or Einhorn is Finkel. Or Einhorn is Finkel. Or Maleche. Or Maleche. Yeah, I got stuff right or for that. Or Ellen DeGenerate. Or Ellen DeGenerate. <laughs> We're doing that. I'll, I'll dress up whatever. Dude, I'll put on a <laughs> fucking dress, dude. I don't Let's care. Do All of us, everybody. We got to do Ellen DeGenerate fucking thing. Ellen DeGenerate. I like it. <laughs> I Appreciate like your time, man. All thank right, you dude. so much. If you made it this far, thank you guys so much for listening to this week's episode of the All Right Take 5 podcast. I want to throw out a huge thank you to Bunny for recording this episode with me and picking the song to start off this episode with, in case you were wondering. That was the band Vola with the song Head Mounted Sideways. That song goes fucking hard. Now make sure to give some love to Bunny on all social medias and follow all the projects she's a part of. If you like the podcast, please like, share, comment, and review your support is greatly appreciated. And make sure to follow my bands, Admados and Convict. Make sure you guys continue scratching that artistic itch. And I'll leave you with a song from one of my favorite bands, which Bunny's been a part of. This is 5393 with the song Infections. Turn it up, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the All Right Take 5 podcast. <laughs>
world withers away.